from the belly of the whale and Jim. Three Hebrew children from the fiery furnace, so the good book do declare. Now, Lord, if you can't help me, for goodness sake, don't you help that bear. Now, Mr. Bear, what do you think? I can't forget the way I want to rest you. Sextet from Floridora, Tell Me Pretty Maiden, Edison Records. <laughs>
Right. It's definitely better that these guys can't current that you can't currently <laughs> hear these guys. Let me just there we go, you're on. We're on the internet. I think we're all live. We have microphone. Quick, act um, normal. Act normal yeah. everybody. We have just had <laughs> Ange in absolute hysterics. She's been she basically got got herself into a fit of giggles and didn't stop for, that's why we were late. That's why we're six minutes. Like that's how long it lasted. No, it's not true. <laughs> not far off. Ham is brilliant. not funny. By the way, it's not funny. It's not funny. I don't, and yeah. If anybody asks you what you've got in your room, yeah, it's not ham. It's never ham. No, ever. Never take ham into the office. (laughs) 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 Okay, so welcome to another edition of Infinite Monkey Tales. We have gone all the way back to the 1902 for this one. Around there. Around there. So you heard the song that you just heard was um, "Tell Me, Pretty Maiden" from Floridora, and Leslie Stewart was a composer. And I think that was from about, I don't know, nineteen. It might have that version of it might have been from about nineteen something or other about there. Um, but yeah, how's that many? Nineteen oh eight, I think it was when it was originally. Hey, look at that. <clears throat> so, you know what? You've done this before, haven't you? This whole radio pre- present presenting thing. Yes. This one goes out to all you truckers out there. <laughs> so, everybody who is with us, um, we're going to be playing a new game today. Now, hang on, I don't know if all those guys... Are you... I don't know. Are we quiet? Are you Not quiet? normally. <laughs> Not normally. Um, yeah, let me just check. True comp. No, you should be okay. Good. Right, excellent. That is fine you up in different places right uh so we've have had uh, a few things going on we've got november <coughs> schedule happening Ange, are you wanting to give us a talk about what our november schedule is or do you want to fact a minute while you bring it up because i totally sprung that on you let's talk about ham for a i bit. have it just here to hand <laughs> or hammed yeah um yeah someone lend her a ham yeah. November. Well, well, in December we are hoping to go back to some campaigns which we are planning, um, hoping to bring back the D and D Lost. Uh, we keep calling it the Lost. I don't know where that name came from, but the Lost campaign with uh, Tanner and Ariel. And um, well, it's been gone quite a while, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so and I've forgotten Pearl's name of his character. What's your name of the character? Fancy, Fancy pants. pants. And, <laughs> Fancy pants. So yeah, so uh, we will be looking to bring on along some Stupid new characters memory. on that. We are running it for eight, six to eight weeks stints. So of various, um, and then we're going to try try some blades in the dark and fit some other things um. around that. That's in December. So while we're planning that in the background, um, in November we have some spaces for some games or some chats, which we're going to do. Um, but Saturday, the November the seventh, we've Atropy of the Flesh, which is D and D DM in by Roy. This man here. That's full um, with everybody on that. <laughs> um, Friday the thirteenth, we're bringing back Shadow of the Demon Lord Part Two, which is being um, run by some old pirate. Um, and then the Saturday, November the fourteenth, we will have Atropy of the Flesh Part Two, um, obviously by Croy. Um, Saturday, November the 21st. Oh, no, uh, Monday, November the 16th. We are having an online um, chat and get together session with the team and anyone else that might have any knowledge on gaming. Uh, we're thinking <laughs> looking at the pros and cons of crunchy games and, we? R- and rule we with light. Rules so, light versus crunchy games. Because, well. So, yeah, obviously, my input on those nights is going to be absolutely epic. So, um, so we're doing that Monday, November the 16th. (laughs) Saturday, November the 21st, we're going back to Mutant and Masterminds, which is being run by our lovely Infinity. Yes. There is two spaces left on that. He says, we've got the normal team, but there is space for two more players if you want to jump in on that one. Get in. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Infinati. <laughs> Thursday, November 26th, we, me and Infinati are doing one of our solo Call of Cthulhu games. So that'll be, that's always a really sombre affair. 
Um, <laughs> no, Saturday, November the 28th, we, um, some old pirate is running um, the first one um, for the, we've ran of Mothership. I, I, although I may, I may be, I may be going to persuade somebody else to do it instead. Oh, well, anyway, Mothership <laughs> will be there with one space. <laughs> And then Monday, November the 30th, we're going to bring another chat session in, So, um, which is just as guys talking rubbish. Crap. That hopefully yeah. that will be able to be streamed. And it's the pros and cons of sandbox or railroad campaigns. <clears throat> so that's what we're doing. But we are hoping to bring in that's some no midweek on ones. Yeah. We're, going to, we're, we're looking at bringing in some um, computer games like um, Divinity and... Well, I was looking at that Baldur's Gate 3. Baldur's Gate. Baldur's Gate. But then I saw how much it was and went, yeah, I'm not yeah, working. Yeah, that's, that's 60 bucks that's... US. So Yeah, so Ooh. that got shoved to... I got shipped to one side, but but if somebody owns it and they want to stream it through our channel, but there is we do have some conditions with any of these games, and we're gonna we're gonna be streaming Phasmophobia as well. That if you play the games on our channel, they have to be RP'd. They have to be going to characters, and we have to RP them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, you mentioned you mentioned the the Divinity series already. Um, Divinity Original Sin two. I believe there's room for six players for multiplayer. It's an incredible. Well, the whole series is very well done, but that's a very, very good game, and I own that one. So. <laughs> I don't, don't know. Play, <laughs> Divinity yeah. Original Sin two. I don't know because yes. um, somebody gave me a copy because they want me to play it, and I've I've only started looking at it last week, so. So yeah, so but that's all in the pipeline. So that's where we're at, at the minute. Uh, I uh, dropped an announcement. Uh, well, no one's going to be able to see it though, uh, or a lot of folks won't be able to see it. It's under the uh, chat section of the Mothership uh, tab. Is that um, a game you've prepped? Did yes. I miss that? It's when I'm doing. Oh, okay. That sounds cooler than what I'm doing. So we'll forget mine and we'll do yours. <laughs> oh, sorry, I didn't see that. Oh, but that's not. We no, haven't got a scheduled date for that. So as soon as we've got no, a scheduled said, date, we can I pop it in. Yeah. Soon because I am at, It's going to be sometime in November. Um, and the sixteenth. That's I where it's going to be. I would really appreciate Eric. it. So, my, hmm? It'll be the sixteenth. That's what it's going to be, my friend. <laughs> it is. <laughs> um, apparently, apparently, we're playing Mothership that night. Oh yeah. Um, well, well. I'll talk with you and I'll chat. I'll met all the, 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 okay. the we have a calendar section in Discord now, so um... well, I, I don't mind running it. It's just I've got some issues with the the roll twenty aspect of things. I'm gonna need a little help to get that portion set up. But all right, yeah, yeah. And that's what um... we that's what we like to do. I mean, we've, we've, we're supporting each other. We're helping each other get games on the go. We're helping each other understand rules. We're helping each other get to grips of role playing. We're having discussions about different game systems. Um, and, and really uh, trying to support each other as, as much as we can uh, to try and get everybody more involved into the world of tabletop role-playing games, which for some of us is is new, and for others it's it's like 19 years in the making or, or more. Um, so it's a, a good range of people, but the most important thing in the way that we usually tend to manage to come back week after week after week is that we end up having fun when we're playing. I don't know how that happens, it just seems like some sort of magic. Speaking of playing games, oh, segueing um, in so slowly. Well, that was neat, wasn't it? I told can you we, he's done this before. Can we please Smooth. get a little bit of background about this cast and the runes? Because oh, hell. It's, it's hot off the press. Mm. Yeah, this is. Um, it was in Kickstarter earlier this year, I think it was. Yeah. Um, it's a, a, um, a role playing game based on the. Well, based kind of loosely around the stories of M.R. James, who was the prominent ghost story writer of the uh, of his time. Um, and most of us probably know a lot of his stories, even if you don't know they're by him. Um, he was he's very much responsible for the, the kind of the traditional kind of ghost stories that we see. Generally, they show uh, at least one M.R. James ghost story dramatization on the BBC every Christmas, if not more. Um, and that's about it. It's basically uh, the using the the gumshoe system um, that we have been that we're almost familiar with. Um, mm. We almost we've almost gotten onto chapter two um, of the gumshoe system. 
uh, we've been playing a couple of games in that using uh, using that rule set for uh, invasive procedures, which is uh, Croy's been running for us. And we played uh, Edge of Darkness last week, um, the Call of Cthulhu scenario, which we converted to Gumshoe because because. Um, so we kind of almost know what we're doing, which is which is weird. No, we have no idea what we're doing either. Anyway, no, no, no. When we're talking about rules light and rules crunchy, we're most definitely I'm most definitely on the <laughs> the rules light really? side of things because I can't, I just can't read the rules. Yeah, rules. Who needs them? We like stories. We're infinite monkey yeah. tales, not infinite monkey rule books. Yes. <laughs> um. Okay, so uh, just shout out to everybody in chat, Ange, Pale, well, they're with us here. Uh, Mini, how's it going? Mini just got a VR headset, by the way. Congrats, Mini. Nice. Very nice. Bongmaster's in. Hey, Bong, how's it going? Uh, some old pirate. All right, Jade, thank you very much for that two-month sub on the Infinite Monkey Tales. I hope and that we can get you into a game very soon, because I know we've been talking about that as well. I've been trying. Trolls, trolls. Yeah, we've all been we've all been helping. Um, trolls, <laughs> you are uh, my sunshine. Uh, my only sunshine. My only. Yeah. Um, you are the. <laughs> you are the, happy. the creator of. Um, please remind me of that game, Monkey. Monkey pirate, pirate, pirate monkeys. Pirate, pirate monkeys. Pirate monkeys. Yeah, oh, don't worry. I've been nagging him this week to sort out his goblin and monkey pirates too. Um, but. Yeah, so he so, is going yeah. to be streaming with us. It's, yeah, it's the does... sequel, Escape from Monkey Island. Yep, and he also oh. does Dungeons and & Dragons, and he also does uh, a game, a new game, which I can't remember the name of, but it sounds very kind of Scandic in origin. Um, but I think that's uh, that's something else. So, yeah, Trolls is... I think everybody's prolific. just calling it the Swedish D&D. &D. That's, yeah, that's I think what that we're referring to. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> we've, got, we've got Lloyd. We've got Lloyd with us. Um, Hi, Lloyd. And... Hi, Lloyd. We've got Russ. Hey, Russ, how's it going? Hi. It was an Jack Lloydington. Yes. <laughs> Russ wants to know if anybody's office is made of ham. Um. <laughs> what kind of ham? I've not yeah. checked. Don't, don't set me going again, because it'll be the end of the stream. Office Keen's, made of ham. Keen's in again. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, let's get playing. Let's get Hi, playing. Keen. Curtis in. Hey, how's it going? Tony's in. Oh, hey, wow. Tony. We need to play a game, don't we? We're rabbling so on These here, people have nothing on. better to do on a Friday night. Please honestly. you. <laughs> Absolutely. They keep us on in the background. We're like, we're like uh, some a of radio us even dressed broadcast. up for the occasion. Not me. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Jade's still working. You know, they don't have anything connected. like that around here, unfortunately. You know, the, oh. the older clothes. Well, they don't have clothes where you are? No, they have clothes. They just don't have any of the really cool stuff so you can play dress up. Oh, okay. Like that. Wow. Rusty's office has more uncured ham than paper right now. Oh. Right. <laughs> On that note... So that that actually wouldn't have been very funny for us at all when that <laughs> happened earlier, would it? <laughs> yeah, so many you questions know. there. You Let's play. You caught us 20 <laughs> minutes ago. We were like, what? <laughs> there we go. Okay, let's go. We're kind, of, we're kind of there. We're kind of there. Let's do another one. Let's jump to this one. Here we go. <sighs> Unfortunately, the background is uh, of this is casting the runes. The game is called Casting the Runes. Um, I'll have to sort the crop because normally what I do when I do that production is the S is in the middle. Um, uh, yeah, never mind. It's by the by. The game is called Casting the Runes. I will now shut up and I will hand you over to our. Are you Games Master? Is Games Master the correct terminology to take designation for casting the runes? I, well, I gotta say, I'm not a big fan of all the different DM. What, what are the Keeper. other ones? Keeper, yeah. Keeper, yeah. Keeper warden, GM. For mothership. I'm uh, the warden. Call him Tim. You know, alien, alien Tim. RPG is mother. <laughs> the game mother. I know that's the worst, right? Yeah. Yeah, I just. Yeah. I mean, I can handle den mom. <laughs> I can handle D and D mom. It's like Sucker game. Mom. Yeah, game. Game mother. I. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Yeah. I guess they were. I guess they were under a deadline when they said, "Just push out okay. the door." <laughs> so, as if by it's magic, been twenty years. We are now magic. going to transform ourselves into the characters. Can I, I uh, do a quick spin? But can, I tag myself with my horse. Can so we? On. Can we um, get a little bit of knowledge about this game, please? What is it about? 
What we? What's uh, uh, the what It's about it, right. Story? Okay. Um, with yeah, this particular with game, the accent. <clears throat> I already have the accent. I am English. Mm-hmm. Oh right. Sorry. <laughs> <sighs> Um, it, it's the early 1900s, um, and uh, we, we have a, a group of investigators who are who are going to be summoned to an old house um, on the uh, the South Downs <clears throat> at the request of a friend of a friend, uh, as as these things always go. <clears throat> um, we have a, a, a an interesting group. And a, a strange amalgam, actually, um, of of investigators that we have uh, with us this evening. Um, shall we? Do, do you want to introduce yourselves before we go in, or I mean, you don't have to think. Don't tell us. Just give us your name and what you do. How about that? Okay, I, I'm uh, Molly Craythorn. I'm an author, and I investigate um, ghosts <laughs> and folklore. I'm, uh, I'm uh, William A. Havelock. I have built my friends. I'm a, I'm an inspector with Scotland Yard. I uh, have a fair bit of background in unusual cases with unusual circumstances. It's led me to meet folks like uh, my friends here. And um, nowadays, when something like this comes up, <laughs> I'm the flat foot they call. Uh, I've got uh, Jared Baxter, who is a practicing Egyptologist and procurer of uh, many relics for the uh, the British Museum <clears throat> of antiquities. Hello, my name is Alfred Kensington, and I am a journalist working in London, but not without a significant interest in those strange events that sometimes catch you in the corner of your eye. Mm. Okay. And so, um, a friend of yours, Herbert Fanshawe, uh, has contacted you. He's received a letter from his, uh, his friend, Jack Singleton recently. Um, uh, the letter is, uh, this one. <clears throat> which you probably can't see. Um, It says, Dear Herbert, As you know, I have taken the house at Trevor Major for a few weeks, as I'd heard that dry fly fishing here was superb. Well, since taking up residence here, I've noticed something of an odd atmosphere. It even seems to be making old Franklin somewhat apprehensive. I remember you telling me about that most interesting group of friends of yours, you know, the ones that take an interest in ghostly things. I thought perhaps they might enjoy a few days poking around the old place. Either that, or they could join me in a spot of trout fishing. Catch me up on some of the happenings in town, if if that more takes their fancy. Would you mask them, old chap? A few friendly faces around would probably cheer the place up a bit. I'll have Franklin expect them on the 28th of May, at their convenience, of course. Yours, Jack. And so, Fanshawe has contacted you and asked if you would be willing to go out and see this uh, this friend of his. Um, and I assume you are going to accept, because otherwise <laughs> it's going to be a real short game. Yes. Of so, course. Yeah, but since you asked him nicely. <laughs> yeah. Um, now... I, I, I do believe that somebody may have mentioned something about doing a little bit of investigating about the house and the like. That was me, yes. It was you, yeah. So what was what is it that uh, Inspector Havelock would be wanting to have a look at? Well, depending on exactly how much uh, our friend Herbert's told us, he's given an indication of um, well, some ghostly happenings. So since that sort of thing is usually tied to a place's history and, and things, either individuals or a place in general, I would like to try doing uh, perhaps a, a library uh, use 
uh, role to uh, find out if there are any rumors or old tales or uh, you know mysterious happenings on the, the for the uh, estate or on the grounds. Mm. Um, and for somebody with your background, this is not a difficult thing to do. Um, there are a number of, pra- of places that you would be able to find information about the house. Um, the Royal Institute of British Architects, for example, the British Library, even um, um, Society of Antiquaries, and even uh, back issues of Country Life. Um, the house you discover it currently belongs to the Duke of Buckingham, and came into the family through a marriage to a, a heiress in the mid 17th century. The present house uh, was built um, in 1600 around the core of an older medieval house um, and has had various offices and outbuildings added to it uh, in the 1770s. Um, the Dukes of Buckingham, they do have larger, more comfortable homes in and near London, and they haven't, they last used the house themselves. It was like in the mid 19th century. And um, even then it was, it was mainly just as like a, a fishing lodge effectively. Um, you don't discover anything um, about any odd happenings at the house, strangely enough. Hmm. But not in basically not in all of its history that's recorded. There's, there's yeah, nothing. there's no there's no records of, of um, particularly ghostly happenings. Nobody's reported anything. Okay, along those lines. Okay. Um, and so you you make your way um, uh, to Trevor Major. Um, you catch the um, the south. You take the South Coast Railway, the Brighton Line, uh, to Lewis, um, and from there, a short cab ride out to Trevor Major. Uh, the house itself. It's a, a lonely and isolated place, um, sitting in a hollow in the northern face of the South Downs. Um, um, and the road to the house, it runs along the South Downs above. Uh, and as, as you, you're heading down this, this narrow country road towards the house, which you can just make out in the distance below you, you notice uh, a large brick kiln um, off, set off the side of the road, it's um, uh, like a a bottle shape, a bottle shaped building made of bricks itself. Um, but it looks in ruin and disrepair. It's kind of fallen in. Um, ivy is crawled up the side, um, and the brambles are growing all around the outside of it. Um, but you know, it's quite a an odd strangely disquieting sight as you drive down the country road towards Trevor Major Manor, um, which you see just ahead of you. So um, would this kiln, would it constitute being on the grounds of the estate? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of just to the back of the house. Uh, and the road that you're on, it takes you round down the eastern side of the house and round to the front. And uh, the house is kind of, uh, there's a, a, a three, um, it's walled on three sides of this strange, this strange, this red brick um, that the house is made of also. Um, yeah. Um, it's quite a small house for a manor house, and it's kind of quite long and narrow. Um, the wall around the outside of it is all overgrown, um, there's snapdragons and stone crops kind of springing up all around it. Uh, and outside of the wall, there's a ring um, of pine grove. Uh, and the road runs down this eastern side of the house and through a gap in the pines and then ends up on a gravel drive, which pulls up to the front of the house. And the wall is on three sides, so the back and the two sides and the the drive is all, it's all, that's the open portion of the house. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, 
We will be in horse carriage, wouldn't we? You will. Yeah. Um, I wait for someone to help me down from the carriage. <laughs> well, being a yeah. rather sizable gentleman, I'll um, I'll get out first unless someone else wants to go first. Uh, open the door and offer my hand to the lady. Hmm. It's appreciated, William. My Step pleasure. down, and uh, I take in the um, the building. Yeah. Um. It's it's not that old a building, really, uh, compared to a lot of these manor houses that are in the area. Um, but the outbuildings are definitely kind of much more modern. Modern, you can tell where these have been added on to the original structure. Um, there's a large front door um, that's facing out onto this gravel driveway, um, and two like wings on either side of the door. Very pleasant. Yeah, the paths and the gardens out here on the front—they're all. They haven't been tended to for quite some time, and they're all kind of overgrown. Um, the stone paths that kind of run through the gardens uh, are kind of covered in moss. Um, yeah, looks like it's not necessarily been used um, for quite some time. Yeah. What was the chap's name again? I didn't write it down. Which one? Jack Singleton. Singleton. Yeah. Sorry. What? Jack Singleton. Did uh, did Herbert mention how long that Jack has been here at the manor? Uh, yeah, about a week. He's, he's taken about up. a week. Yeah, he's been here about a week. Yeah. And uh, is this going to be his place of residence for a time, or is he just? He's he's decided to to take it for a few weeks. Um, British aristocracy or the yeah. British people they tended to take houses for summers or uh, for certain parts yeah. of the year. And they they take themselves from the city, and that's what the he's that's what this guy's effectively yeah. done. Yeah, he's took himself I mean, from the city for rest and recuperation. Yeah, I mean, you know he um that this this uh, Jack he is a barrister. Um, he's a successful barrister, even if it, his career is quite um, undistinguished, if you like. But he's he's done very well for himself out of it. Um, and he is he's come out here for a for sport, effectively, he's he's a keen fisherman, and he's come out here to do some fishing. Um, there is a river, not too far away, on the grounds. Would 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 they had would he have had, would he have staff? Um, he has at least one serp man servant, right? Yeah, he does. Yeah. Okay, I I approach the door. Okay. And, uh, uh, knock on it. Yeah. Well, there's a, like a a handbell yeah, at the side. Yeah. The handbell. And you ring that, and the door opens after just a few moments. And there's a quite a well dressed, um, and what you guy you assume to be this Franklin, um, Singleton's valet. Um, and he greets you, Ollie Craythorn, Mom Franklin, Mom. He's quite a, a quiet fellow. Um, slightly sullen, maybe. Um, and perhaps there's something in his face that makes you think, you know, there's a, a, a touch of anxiety there, perhaps. Um, and he arranges to have your bags taken off of the um, off of the cab, and, and he leads you through into the sitting room. Uh, he takes you through this large hallway, um, which has a staircase that leads up the centre and galleried around the outside. Uh, it's all oak, like a dark oak panelling lining the walls. But he takes you to a room off to the, uh, the right, uh, and into a sitting room, which, judging by some of the bookshelves that are, are here as well, seems to maybe double as a, a, a kind of a small library for the house. And there's a, a gentleman, he's wearing a, well, he's very well dressed, with a, um, a tweed suit. Uh, he kind of stands up, places down his newspaper, and he strides across the room confidently and shakes your hand and introduces himself. He says, uh, yes. 
very, very good to see you. I'm, I'm Jack Singleton. Very nice to meet you, finally. Molly Craythorn. Pleasure's yes. all mine. Yes, I've heard a lot about you, he says. <laughs> I'll doff my bowler hat and tuck it smartly under my arm and extend my hand and ah. shake it. Pleasure to meet you, uh, Mr. Singleton. Hmm. Is, is it... <laughs> For the DM, is is it single or Mister or is it giving it is his? It's Mister. No, he's mister. he's not. A, yeah, he's not got a title. He's just Mister. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mister Singleton. Uh, ah. Gerard Baxter. Uh, indeed. It's a pleasure very, to meet you. Very good to meet you. Yes. And that must mean, you sir. Actually, you didn't introduce. Yeah, you did. Did you introduce him with your name? I, I got. I interrupted myself when I was asking you <laughs> if it was Mister, or <laughs> Sir, or Lord, or whatever. Yeah. Uh, we may have a look, uh, Bill. Oh. <clears throat> Please pay us, sir. Yes. He shakes your hand. Um, How's uh, I gauge his handshake? Is it strong, firm, confident? Like his yeah motion? Yeah, okay. I think so. Um, he. Uh, you have a sess honesty, right, don't you? Yes. As a, yeah. Yeah, the, the, he seems to be displaying this this very same um, kind of anxiety, like uh, in the background. He's got so a bit of an edge to him. He's got a bit of a bravado here to make us feel welcome, but he's bothered by what's been going on. Something, something is troubling him. Um, yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. Um... I uh, trust you had a good journey, he says. Oh, of course that, he hasn't. That's because you must I, be so. No, that's I am still in the carriage. I have yet to arrive. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. Oh, you have not travelled with these reprobates. I'm yes. I will be joining. Someone I didn't mean to slam the door in his face. It just kind of happened to you. He's <laughs> probably lying on the floor of the carriage. <laughs> so. Uh, he invites the, the, the other. He offers you a drink um, as you are awaiting your. Is there a reason why um, Mr. Kensington has not travelled with the others? Or I, I was working. There was an opportunity in the nearby town to get a bit of a scoop. Uh, oh, there was uh, interesting. There was talk of some horses being sold at a very high price. So I thought, what better way to make myself a little bit of extra than wiring or get prepared for something a little bit more front page ready for the times. Ah, well, something that maybe you could be looking into after you've finished. Indeed, little... always, always have an iron in the fire as a great reporter. Yeah, yeah that, that sounds like a very good idea. And so, um, it's probably getting into the late afternoon when the the carriage draws up to the front of the house containing Alfred Kensington. Um, the rest of you uh, are shown to rooms. Um, now, you have a choice of, of, of bedrooms. But the master bedroom is obviously taken. Uh, we do have a, a little bit of a, a diagram of the house that we can take a look at. Um. <clears throat> uh, and there's even plans to it. <clears throat> and I'll make those available to you so you can get to these any time you feel like you need to. Is the letter available as well, please? Uh, I will do that. Thank I most you. certainly will. Yes. Um, so, by the time Alfred shows up, um, you can see that Franklin, the um, the valet, he is uh, arranging some basket chairs on the gravel in front of the front door. Um, clearly this is where uh, Jack has decided to, to have afternoon tea <clears throat> um, but he stops as soon as he sees you pull up and rushes over to the carriage to help you carry your bags uh, 
Good afternoon to you, sir. You are uh, expected. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. I was <coughs> looking forward. I must apologize for my tardiness. I can't imagine the <laughs> <a> spelling. <laughs> I am a journalist. My command of the English language is phenomenal. But sometimes <laughs> yes, I feel I like see. a hand that guides me is just not exactly... Anyway, I am here now that the, the hand of time seems to be slower than my own. Yes. Rush. Um, Gerard, um, uh, while you're kind of uh, waiting for our, our, our late guest to arrive, um, you get a chance to have a quick look at the house. Uh, you recognise it's kind of the um, early 18th century. Uh, 17th century, sorry. Um, yeah. He's... Uh, the oak staircase leads up to a, a gallery. There's a dining room that's on the, um, the almost entire east front kind of wing. And there are two sitting rooms that are on the west front. Uh, the upper stairway story has three main bedrooms um, with corresponding chief rooms below uh, and uh, numerous bedrooms for you to for you to choose from um, and you are led out to the basket chairs out on the front of the garden where Franklin serves Pim's cup to everyone Pims. Pims. Because, you know, that's what we do. Smooth. Yeah. Um, so Jack, him? yeah, Jack himself, he, like I say, he's a middle-aged barrister. Um, he's quite sophisticated, but you, you all kind of deduce that he seems uh, a little nervous. <clears throat> um, you also find out that he has two staff staying with him in the house Mr. and Mrs. Franklin um, uh, Franklin is the valet with Mrs. Franklin is the housekeeper uh, who does the cooking also yeah uh, as we sit down for Pims I'll uh... so uh, Jack would you like to embellish a little bit about what is bothering you so much and why you require here well, I first saw the house. Um, it was advertised in the Sussex paper um, with a statement uh, that there was good dry fly fishing belonging to it. The quoted rent was almost comically small. Apparently, it's a lesser holding of one of the great families, the Dukes of Buckingham, who are either always in town or up north or on the continent, and it's been practically empty since 1896. Well, I was sceptical, but I came down. I looked it over, wandered by the stream for half an hour. I went straight back to the agent, and before nightfall, had taken it for a month with the option of renewal. Well, that was about a week ago at first. Everything went swimmingly. On my very first evening, I caught two brace of fine trout, and the fishing has been superb ever since. Mrs. Franklin was prepared for the worst, but found all for the best, with running hot and cold water from taps. It neither stuck nor leaked, and Franklin was able to find all the extra help we needed from the village and supplies as well. The locals, the locals were well, taciturn, withdrawn. Apparently, my arrival caused a good deal of muttering, but no one said anything straight out. But country folk of Sussex are notoriously withdrawn. And that's when the trouble started. Trouble? Yes, there's a strange the atmosphere about the place. No, 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 not at all. Oh. They keep themselves to themselves. Very rarely come up here, to be quite honest. At, uh, so an odd atmosphere. Oh. Franklin, Mrs. Franklin, have noticed it too. The feeling perhaps sometimes you're being watched, especially when I'm down by the bank. Down by Fishing. the where, sorry? Fishing. Oh. Idea. Yes. It's all very odd. Maybe the locals are watching you because you're fishing and they don't like it. Well, why would that be an issue? The land belongs to the house, and I have rented the properties. I can't see what their problem would be. So it's I not in the house. That. It's it's not the house itself. Then it's um, it's down by the, the river that you have the problem. Oh no, no. As I say, Franklin has noticed some odd happenings. 
Feelings like they're like he's being watched when he's working around the house, you know. Oh, very odd. And there's a. Indeed. Perhaps some vagabond has wandered onto the property in the time it's been unused. Well, I, I, I thought that too. Um, I did uh, have a good look round with Franklin, but uh, we didn't find anyone. Oh, very odd. Very peculiar. Yes. So, uh, have you made any changes to the manor or its furniture, its furnishings, its decorative? Uh, uh, no, no, certainly not, old boy. No, my, we're, we're only here for a short period of time. There's no need to bring all my furniture in. It's um, all very odd, really. Sometimes people do get presents, you know, when there's strange pictures you know sometimes some portraits upon the walls do have a tendency for people to think their eyes are following them but it's really a, just a figment of the light or their imagination um maybe, well, maybe... i don't land any paintings down by the river bank i wonder uh, have you had the opportunity to talk with a perhaps a keen local historian maybe there's the stories of folk culture or or some form of of interesting explanation that may be going on down by the, in the pub perhaps uh, have you have you thought to speak to any of the locals about this well i haven't thought to to mention it really it's it's a house you know they might think you or strange folklore is a is folklore has can have a very damaging effect they they Years and years and centuries of folklore have grown and changed with any mo most areas. I expect, um, I expect if you were to ask around the locals, there would be a folklore connected to this. No. Well, that's our job now, isn't it? Uh, to, that's why we've been invited here, is to look into the matter. Uh, I'm sure that uh, Mr. Singleton has far more important things to do than I'm not mean with the locals. Besides, as an officer of the law, I might have a better chance of uh, loosening their tongues. Perhaps we should uh, investigate, like, more mundane causes before we jump to any conclusions. Yes, that sounds like a perfectly reasonable thing to do, you know. <laughs> Why be jumping straight into folklore and ghostly happenings? Well... Yeah, perhaps it's just a case of the house being too quiet. Maybe you're still... a acclimating to the, the local, the, the peace and the quiet from all that busy city work. Hmm. You mentioned unusual happenings. Has there been other things that have occurred uh, besides you feeling that you're being watched? So, occasionally, strange about them. knockings within the house. They can't be explained away by the pipes, you know. At all hours, or perhaps? Well, yes, at all hours, mostly, mostly at night. Time, no, not any hour, I'd imagine. I mean, I'm, I've only been here a week, and uh, most of my days I've spent down by the river. Well, I think it's quite an easy thing. It's It's been a long day travelling in that, and if we should, um, we should have a, take a walk along the... Uh, the riverside and then if we have our evening meal and we get we go down for the evening we, i'm sure by tomorrow we can have a look round well, i'm sure you must be tired after your journey um the, the evening is kind of closing in uh, as you kind of sat there in these basket chairs um and the kind of light is starting to fade um and you can kind of see the sweep of of the wheel the, the greenery of the uh, the rolling hills and, and, and trees uh, below, all kind of now wrapped in this twilight. Um, and the ring of pines around the house, it kind of cuts out the light, the sun drops beneath them. And the whole, yeah, the whole manor now, it seems kind of darker and more heavy, almost claustrophobic. And you're kind of getting this feeling. Um, and you can see the lights or the lamps in the, the house now are starting to be lit. And then all of you, you suddenly get this chill 
that kind of goes right through you. It's like a like a breeze, but the air is completely still. It's a bit unseasonable. Um, and yes, and it there's something something whole wholly sinister, perhaps, about the entire thing that sets you all on edge. Uh, could you all make stability tests, please? So everyone fails. <laughs> <laughs> is six good or bad? I can't remember. Great. Yeah, the higher the better. Yep. We want to go. We want. To, we need to roll high. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so basically, if you look at stability on your character sheet, if you scroll down the general skills, one of them will be stability. Eric, just press the little just dice. Click the little dice. <laughs> just <laughs> click the little dice symbol that's next to stability, and it should roll a six-sided dice. You can spend points from stability for this, but. Oh, well, it's too late now. Yeah. Do you see it, sir? I was trying to remember uh, which... No, which because... Which bit you clicked oh, on to roll uh, the dice. Your character sheet, scroll down. Yeah, I've, I've got it. it it's, it's folded up and I can't get it to uh, open. Let me roll it for you. Oh, you should have rolled it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I gave you a two. <laughs> Um, okay, fault, so not mine. Yeah. Um, so I think those that failed, which is going to be everybody except Molly. Hey. You're gonna, one, you're going to lose one point of stability. I'll mark yours for you, Eric. Don't worry. I'm more worried about your taking. I don't get to roll my own dice. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with this thing? I think there's a problem between chair and keyboard, Eric. I um, wander around the room and... Uh... You're inside. You're outside at the moment. Oh, you're we're still the... outside? Mm. Um, mm. Oh, that wind has a bit of an edge to it. Yeah, shall we, um, shall we go inside? Oh, getting... you, you felt it too. I thought you would. Yeah. It usually comes out at this time of evening and in this place. You're right, let's go indoors. It's just it's a draft up from the, from the water's edge. Should we pop inside and um, maybe partake in a cup of tea? Are there any stories? Are there any books? Is a, a, does this manor come equipped with its own library? Perhaps I, I find it strange that there would not be some tales of the area. Perhaps, perhaps a, a drowning in the lake or something like that would be, would be <laughs> most delicious. There's a small library in the front sitting room. Ah, but... Give us something to look at over the evening. Yes. Well, uh, you see that, or perhaps uh, you could get ready for dinner. Yes, um, I think I'll do that. Um, tomorrow, would there be any hands from the, the village up tomorrow that we could speak to them? Because I am almost positive there will be a folklore story to do with this <laughs> building. I don't believe that uh, we have anybody due to come up. It's a shame. It's a Sunday, Molly, after all. Uh, Molly, I like your thinking very much, my dear. That is oh, absolutely fantastic. I, I couldn't agree more with you. It would be a pleasure to speak with I someone. find with my writings that most ghost stories are usually stems from folklore and almost gossip sometimes. But by the by... And I wander off inside and go to um, my room to change. Yep. Um, I'll claim the one next to the bathroom, the little one with the. I think it's a, it's a fireplace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, bye. That, that rolled there, um, Eric. Well done. You still fail, by the way. Yeah, well, <laughs> but now I feel better because it was me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah, you, you probably would You may have like passed one. with that one, mate, but I'm not going to let you know. I'll that. take um, the large O. You are a right now. <laughs> I'll take the one that's right at the top, the one on the right hand side. Pick an O, any O. Yeah. 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 The big, the big the long big O. o. Yeah. The Q. That's uh, where Mr. and and Mrs. Uh, Franklin. Oh, Q's Jack's rooms. Okay. 
both of those? P and yeah. Q? We're not too worried about yeah, the So I'm at the big room at the top at the back. That would be the back, wouldn't it? No. Oh, no, right at the front. Oh, mm. what do you think about that? I'm at the front. It's the person at the front always gets it, Ange. I thought it was the one in the back. <sighs> okay, so I, I, I go up to my rooms and... Um, and uh, change for evening and have a quick um, wander around the room. Yeah, um, your rooms are quite, they're quite spartan actually. There's more of this oak panelling um, and uh, there is like a four poster bed uh, in the room and basically just a rug with a wooden floor. Um, but it's, there's, there's very little in the way of, of decoration. In fact, um actually, yeah yeah there's very little at all uh, in here you may have noticed a few um pictures up in the sitting room earlier there it is um but there's very little elsewhere yeah i i will change um i will glance out the yeah. window on before yeah. i go down well yeah um, and you've noticed that, that that strange sensation that you had outside pretty much disappeared as soon as you kind of entered into the warm glow of the the hallway there. The lights kind of lit, casting their little orange glows around. Um, kind of, yeah, that the whole uncanny feeling that you were getting had dispelled pretty much instantly. Okay. I'll, after I've got ready, I, I will go downstairs to the main room. Yes, um, the dining room uh, is all kind of laid out. Um, there's a place set for each one of you. Um, yes, what is, what is everybody else up to? I think Gerard's just going to, like, I guess, take his case up to the room, just sort of unpack, but, like, doesn't see much of a reason to change, because, I mean, he's just been, <laughs> he's just been on card all day, so... <laughs> Yeah, sure. Being practical about it. Um, yeah, he might just like leave his like travel coat like hung over the back of a chair or something. Do I head yeah. back down again? Yeah, cool. I guess it's pretty much the same for the others, is it? Or yeah, I'll uh, take off my uh, my coat and hang it up in the in the closet. So I'm in my normal shirt and vest with my gold chain and whatnot. Yeah. Um, I will so I, uh, Very swanky. My, I, yeah, I secure my service revolver in the nightstand and mm-hmm. place my uh, investigators kit in the shelf or in the drawer underneath that one. Um, I'll take a slow tour around the, you know, or just on my way down to the dining room, I'll just of pause and look at the decorations and the woodwork and everything and just kind of try and get a feel for the place yeah um compared to the the feeling that you had outside which you know was it was quite uncomfortable for you for you uh bill um it's well as soon as you entered much like molly as soon as you'd entered into the uh the hallway that feeling had dispersed and, you know, you suddenly felt a little bit lighter. Um, uh, and then headed up to your room. Um, and you've still kind of got this kind of kind of a cozy feeling that you have right now mm. as you're kind of making your way. Like I say, it's all this oak paneling is everywhere. Yeah. Um, and you kind of stop to admire some of the pictures that are perhaps hanging up um, in the hallway, there's a kind of a large grandfather clock, which looks quite impressive and has been stood there clearly for quite some time. And it's kind of making this soft ticking um, as you kind of stop and admire it. Um, Alfred, are you up to anything? Uh, Franklin? Franklin? Where's that dressing butler going? Oh, sir, there you are. <laughs> Can I help you, sir? Uh, take my bags up to the room, will you, please? Oh, of course, sir. Thank you. And uh, here's a little... For yourself. For... Thank you very much. And uh, take out a 
whatever it oh, is. I couldn't, I couldn't possibly, sir. I, I, I'll leave it here then. Please, thank you. I much appreciate it. I'm in the. And I, I'll, can you point me in the? Can you point me to the library, please? Well, it it's more of a sitting room actually, sir. But it's just there. Thank you very much. Points to the the room on the right from the entrance. Uh, I'll take your bags up, sir. Um, is there anything else I can do for you, sir? No, uh, thank you very much. I'm going to have a look around. Oh, very good, sir. Uh, so you head off into the sitting room. Um, and there are a few bookshelves, floor to ceiling. Uh, there are numerous books. Um on various different subjects. Can I use some of Alfred's awesome library use? His awesome around? library use? Not just any old library use. His awesome library. Yeah. Yeah. Can I spend a point? Yeah, you can spend a point if you so wish. Yes. Uh, I would like to know if there are any books about uh, local folklore. Any any of the uh, stories of historic import or geographical relevance. Hmm. There, there isn't. Strangely enough, there isn't. But you kind of notice um, as you're kind of looking through these various books that there appear to be no books here that are dated later than the 1880s. Um, and also, the estate records are not here in this room. Hmm. No books. Later than date, the dated later than the 1880s, or earlier than the 1880s. Hmm. Say, practically odd. Hmm. Seems like the only recent books. I. I wonder if uh, Jack has brought these here, or or something. I thought the house was empty since eighteen seventy six. So, uh, oh well. Hmm. I just look through a few, just you know, casually picking a few books off and thumbing yeah. through them. Yeah. Um, it's 1896 that the house was last occupied, by the way, just as a matter of fact, if you were, Thank you. were, in, were if you were interested. So it's a few years unaccounted for. Eh? Hmm. You were going to be heading to the dining room as soon as... Okay, so I head into the, the dining room. Um... Who, who's in there? You um... <laughs> I head into the dining room. Uh, who's in there? Um, I would imagine that um, you perhaps pass Bill, uh, who's kind of in the hallway, um, just seems to be looking around. He's taking in a bit of an interest in some of the things that are hanging on from the wall here um, and the old grandfather clock. Um <laughs> I don't know. I kind of get the feeling that maybe is is Bill a bit of a fish out of water here, perhaps. Yeah. Uh, so it, perhaps he's feeling yeah, a little bit some, somewhat. He's he's a little bit out of his element. He's you know surrounded by folks of a you know higher standard mm -hmm. of living and so forth. So these things are you know it's like wow. I bet I couldn't afford one of those in a whole year <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah. I wonder, in um, Franklin, um, could you uh, get me a, sh um, a sherry, please? No, certainly, ma'am. Thank you. And I just sort of wander around the room and um, quickly out of character. Do we all know each other? We've, do we, we, we... I think you will be. Yes, you would. You would. Whether you're friends or, or good friends or anything, I don't. Acquaintances. You are acquaintances, at yeah. least. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, what does Molly do? Mm. Uh, 
Um, yeah. yeah okay. Jared will make his way down. Yeah. After a few minutes. Sure. Uh, and so perhaps you kind of congregate in the dining room. Yeah. Um, Alfred uh, seems to be uh, a little late um, again. Um, and, and perhaps everybody's kind of sat around in the dining room waiting. And, and as you're waiting, um, Gerard, you kind of, you notice that the, the, the dining room is, it's finely furnished, the cabinet work um, here and some of the earthenware and the pewter that is, is arrayed in this room is clearly uh, of superior quality. The, the uh, there are a few pictures that are kind of hung around, and a lot of them they look they're kind of inferior and cheap kind of prints that seem out of keeping with the rest of the house. That's peculiar. Is anyone else around at this point? I'd imagine yeah, that yeah. everybody, um, mm-hmm. except perhaps Alfred, will be there right yeah. now. Yeah. Just like look at this, like all the furnishings and the decorations, they're all um, quite nice and well tuned. And if you look at the paintings on the walls, it's it's all cheaper. Like I don't know, maybe someone was just trying to fill some space. Maybe some trying to I don't know fill the space. Or someone's been helping themselves. Quite possibly. <laughs> so maybe the original p- paintings were taken down and these were just replaced quickly. Perhaps. Or they're like lower quality copies just to say I examine the them. Yeah, I mean, to you, they look like perfectly good pictures, uh, Molly. They're, you know, it. you probably know that perhaps somebody with a more discerning eye might be able mm. to distinguish that these are probably not the okay. finest works of art but just some kind of cheap knockoff prints or whatever that um just look perfect and just pictures sadly <laughs> i i don't chase art thieves enough to <laughs> are they like landscapey kind of pictures and they're of uh, they're, if anything there's no particular uh style or subject i just say well um oh well, at least they're not um portraits of generations gone by uh, they they they, as I said earlier, they do give Except a tendency. That black velvet painting of Elvis in the corner. <laughs> they tend to give it a, a, a an ex, a feeling of watching <clears throat> people watching you. You know, the ancestors looking down. But these, that's my theory, slightly out the window. That. Do, do you know what these pictures are for, Ger- <laughs> Gerald? 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 Gerard. 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 I will tell you in a moment. I'll have a closer look. <laughs> okay, what is it you're wanting to know about the pictures? They're just... Uh, try to think. It's just like... So I guess I guess would it be like more... I, just, I think more information about them. Also, like, do they fit? Like, are they, like, in their own in original, like, frames? Or have they been um, frames or... Yeah, I mean, it's not like you, are you, you're wondering if the, like, the wallpaper is kind of darker behind them or something, as if these, yeah. uh, you know, you got these darker... No, there's nothing like that. It, it, I it, wonder, it, it, if, I, if I may, if these things, these paintings and stuff, match the rest of the decor? Or... No, they don't. And that's, that's the yeah. thing that's really stuck out for Gerard, is that yeah. they don't, that's they don't really fit with... Thinking. That's not yeah. what my character was thinking. I'm still looking at this clock. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it means nothing to me. Um... <laughs> Yeah, um, very odd. That's yeah. It just it's just not in keeping with the rest of the, yeah. the the decor in this in this room, which kind of strikes you as a bit strange. Um, Alfred, you join folks for dinner by this point after you've uh, wait 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 wait. I think you Alfred? might be muted, sir. Huge grandfather clock. Oh my God, Jack Again. is Batman. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. What's happening? Well, good evening. Good evening, everybody. I must apologize. I got a bit lost in there. Some interesting things about this house. Interesting how? Well, Mm. it seems very strange, but none of the books in the house are more than 20 years old. 
he not say though? He, no one had lived in this. Newer then. I don't know. I don't know. No one had lived in the building for a while. Obviously, the people. Eighteen ninety-six. I think it was the last time someone was here. No, this is nineteen oh four. So it's what eight years. Hmm. Yeah. And, and Jack kind of steps through the uh, the door from the kitchen uh, and closing it behind him. You can see he's obviously been conversing with Mrs. Franklin or whoever. Um, he kind of steps around and looks at you. Ah, ah, everyone's here. Excellent. Please be seated. Um, I walk around the table and, and seat myself down. Well, he He's a gentleman. He will draw your chair out for you. Just sit down. It's yeah. normal. It should have been done. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you think of the place, eh? It's it's very nice. It's a very nice building. Sparsely furnished in some places, but obviously um, we've just... Uh, you say no one's lived here for 20 years? No, um, I think the last rental was 1896, or thereabouts. So, was there somebody looking after the building while in all those time? Um, there is a... Uh, I think his name is Nugent. He handles the, the house records. Uh, based in Lewis, I believe he is. A solicitor of some kind. But he manages the property for the Buckinghams, yes? So he's not even here. He's way off in another town. Yes, he's in the, he's in the town, yes. Yes, uh, I mean... Oh, he's, the, the, the... he's local. He's down the uh, road. Well, you, you caught the train from London to Louis, and that is the town where... So he's down there in Louis. Yeah, he's not... Okay, okay. Not here so, no, on the grounds or in the village. He's actually. No, I mean, you can tell that the the house probably hasn't actually been um, had had a resident for a while. Judging by the state of the gardens, things, it's not like there's anybody here keeping up. That's what I was trying to find out. Yeah. So there's yeah. no groundskeeper. There's no groundskeeper all. here. No. Right. Now, is there anything when he talked about the locals? Was he talking about the folks down in Louis? No, he's talking about the uh, the hamlet nearby. This is this okay. is a manor house, and there's so a there hamlet. So there is a small hamlet down the road, called, okay. which is Trevor Major itself. Yeah, um, okay. there's a small group of uh, houses called down Trevor there. Minor. <laughs> no, it's Trevor Major. Major. You don't want no, to do a minor. No, this is like. Major. The, the 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 village is minor. No, this is Trevor Major Manor. <laughs> so, um, you damn Yankees. So, so Jack, um, it That's all seems it all seems quite okay here. Um, I noticed um, Gerald had um, noticed something about your pictures. Did you bring those with you? Oh no, oh no, not to my taste. <laughs> no, they just look a bit out of place. I wonder, perhaps, maybe it's. Something the the last occupant may have maybe swapped them out well, with whatever's here before. I don't know. Can't say I've paid too much attention, but yes, perhaps the Buckinghams have taken the finest finer works and uh, distributed them amongst their other houses, perhaps. Mm. I will maybe lean they... over to Gerard and whisper. Do you think the Buckinghams would even touch those things? As in. Would they buy something like this and hang in one of their places? That's what I'm <laughs> hinting at. Hmm. It, I mean, if I was of their class and wealth, I'd probably, if I had to put a painting, I would probably replace it with a similar kind or bring one of my own. Uh, for, buy in other words, they people. wouldn't wipe their boots with this. I'm wondering if uh, this uh, Nugent may have been up to some funny business. I would have to agree, but uh, perhaps we should go see the man tomorrow. Is he within travelling distance, I guess? Uh, it's a bit of a trek. Um, it, well, it's, 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 uh, it's not too far. It's uh, like a cab ride. Yeah. If you were to do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do they have a carriage here, or do we have to summon one? Not here. No, you'd have to send for one. Okay. Um, yeah, you sit down to a fine meal of poached trout with new potatoes. Poached? I thought the guy was renting the place. 
Yeah, no, he's he's There's he's so poaching this trout. trout. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's renting the mana, not the fish. Sorry. Now he's just catching the fish and eating them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's funny you should mention those paintings. Um, there are still a few of the uh, better pieces. I I'll can show you later if you like. I'd be uh, most intrigued. Yes. Does, they, does this building um, have, a, have a cellar or anything? No, no, it doesn't, I'm afraid. Oh. I was wondering whether they'd stored some of the original house paintings down there, maybe. Or in the no. or in... Where do you keep your wine, then? <laughs> a wine cellar doesn't have to be in a cellar, old boy. No, but the temperature, <laughs> the whites, will spoil the cooler around the year. Yeah, like, I'm only here for the fishing, old chap. Yeah, both. A white wine goes with fish. Even it certainly does. That. And that is what we are drinking right now. Ah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, sniff the cork. <laughs> it's just the cheap stuff. <laughs> do you know? Do you know wines, uh, Inspector? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Inspector Melo at your service. <laughs> Inspector. We should drink new wine before it's time. <clears throat> So Jack, time. <laughs> apart from you know just feeling like you've been watched, have you felt out of the house? Like as I say, I've I've not experienced too much other than that strange that strange feeling. But when I've been out fishing, I've I've had the strangest feeling that that somebody's been watching me and. Uh, it's as though I can see them out of the corner of my eye, but he's not there when I look at him. He. Yes, it's definitely a man, yes. Oh, I say. How delightful. It's a mystery. Yes. Yet it's not in the house. Well, as I say, there is a, a bit of an odd, an odd feeling one gets. Periodically. Like this evening when you were outside. You felt it, didn't you? No, I didn't feel anything. It was, I felt. Oh, it. you did. <laughs> did I? It was you sick. did feel it. You, you may have yeah. just brushed oh. it off. Yeah. A yeah. sudden chill. Well, and the, um... the change in the weather. I, I'm saying that in a reassuring tone, trying not to. You know. Yeah, he smiles, um, and and kind of uh, nods, as if uh, as if he's trying to convince himself. Yes, that's that's all it was. Do they clearly, all something happen? is. Yeah. Uh, yes, the same places. It tends to be like a cold breeze, these noises, or whatever you are hearing. That's where I've I've noticed. I've noticed that. Yes, but but uh, as I as I mentioned, Franklin and Mrs. Franklin, they they say they've they've had this this unusual feeling. This the same feeling that I guess I get while I'm fishing down at the bank. There, they say they they feel as if they're being watched as they go about their daily business. Maybe it's because you've um, come from the busy towns and you're on your own. It's a nice, but you know, you're feeling isolated, and the the quiet, the quiet of the countryside can be very discombobulating sometimes. Well, I'm I'm sure that's true, but I have stayed at other houses before. What a fantastic no. word, discombobulating! I'm going to write that down and use it for my next piece. You sure you can spell it? <laughs> <laughs> a good man, I, I would. There's a, an invention that may perhaps blow your mind. It is called a dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> so well, where are we all going on about his spelling? We're not. Oh. <laughs> his, his love of fancy because words. Butler doesn't yeah. normally have two T's in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Depends how you serve, I guess. So you have a most excellent meal. Uh, you have idle chatter uh, with Jack, and then you are taken through um, into the uh, the rear kind of sitting room where you have port and cigars. Um, I don't uh, smoke. You don't have to have them, old boy. It's not compulsory, but... No, I'll have some of the port. <laughs> 
I, would, me, would I be in this room at this point? But look, we're not going to get into that. No, no, I'm just wondering because it's it, it is the thing where the men used to go off, didn't they? I'm just thinking, please don't leave me in a What are they going to do? Leave you on your own? Yeah, I was thinking that. <laughs> no, no, we're not going we to come do come back that. out and several more pictures are missing. Wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I follow in and I will go and play cards on a table in the corner. Yeah, so you're kind of in, in you're in the, the like the rear sitting room. Um, and uh, yeah, there's some of those artworks I was telling you about, says Jack. And you can see they're about um, hanging on the walls of this room. There's a uh, there's about six six or so uh, watercolors. Um, and uh, Gerard, you kind of you notice that these are yeah these are certainly more they, these are a, a superior workmanship, most definitely. Do they tell any kind of story or uh, give any, uh, like, life around the manor house? Or, you know, do they have any historical figures in them? Um, do, do they tie to, like, the manor or the surrounding uh, lands is basically what I'm asking. I, or they I'm, just really I'm nice glad, glad you asked. I'm glad people? you asked, William. Yeah. One of the um, the first oh, things. you can call me Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they all seem to be of the the house and the surrounding area. Um, these pictures. One of them uh, is a view of the garden, but back in better days when it was um, properly maintained. Um, judging by uh, the the painting, the sun in the painting, you kind of guess it to perhaps be about noon in in the summer. Judging by some of the flowers and that that are on display. Um, another one, kind of is a view down the hill towards the the stream the river um uh. the the clouds the sky is kind of uh, um has some angry gray storm clouds in there the water is kind of gray it, maybe it's a, a an image a scene from spring um and the next one is like a view uphill towards a gap in the pines and there's this flaming red sunset from down on the riverbank? Um, no, from the house, from the, the, the area of the house, perhaps to the side of the house. Yeah. Are um, there any that look from the riverbank up towards the house, sir? This one down towards the stream. Um, yes. Uh, there's another one which is kind of the view southwards um, across the gravel drive looking towards the weald. Okay. And this so one that is. That one would have had to been, whoever painted it would have had to been down on the riverbank? Or looking from the drive, driveway, oh, okay. where pretty much where you you may have sat earlier. You oh, know, this okay. would be reminiscent of where you were sat earlier in, uh, today. Okay. Um, and the other one is uh, the view from the the kind of the west front towards the garden wall, um, and it's quite a bleak, a bleak picture. Um, once again, it's kind of dark skies. A lot of the plants kind of uh, seem to have lost their leafage. You get you guess maybe it's kind of a, a winter. Um, scene. Um, now, this is and, again. This isn't my area of expertise, but do these no. all look to have been painted by the same hand? Um, it, that is easy to say. That might be out of your kind of. Um, I will probably out of your, your my magnifying glass from my vest pocket. Uh -huh. I will say, ooh, the, these really the are lovely. teaches you to be an art historian. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I'm looking, for, I'm looking for a signature along the, the outer edges of the piece. And if push comes to shove, I'll peek it behind the uh, one or more yeah. of the hanging pictures. But I'm looking for the artist's signature or yeah. mark. And, yeah, there there is. You find um, on each of them there uh, is... It's difficult to spot at first, um, but with the help of your magnifying glass, you kind of notice that they're all, they all have the same uh, the initials. Um, F A are the initials. Um, and the last, oh the last of the pictures is um, seems to be a close-up study of the the brick kiln that you made. You noticed on your way in up the road. Um, and obviously, is it it's in the more same intact? 
no it's in a, it's not in this that state of repair it's, it seems to be intact in the picture um <sighs> it's the only one oddly that has that has a, a, a an actual human figure in it yes is it a man um yeah it is it is a man um quite quite well detailed as well magnifying uh, glass uh, Gerard, you would be quite impressed with the um the artistry yeah um such fine detail it's, it's like it was a capture of the man exactly yeah like he was in the painting i'll hand him it's, my magnifying glass it is of the yes and you can you can examine it with the the magnifying glass um it is it's like the brick kiln it's looming against the sky kind of this dark shape um almost uh, silhouetted um, it's clearly in much better shape in working order because you can see there's a, a stream of grey smoke that's rising from the chimney and there's a, this man dressed in grey he's peering into the open door of the kiln uh, and there's a kind of a, a fierce red glow that is emanating from it the, the man himself he's uh, clean shaven, he's youngish uh, with a, a long aquiline nose and a, and a, a square chin um, you can't make out the expression, but for some reason, that whole image, it, it generates quite a sinister atmosphere for you as you're looking at it. Dark shape silhouetted against the sky. There's something slightly unsettling, perhaps, about the whole thing. What time of day is it in the picture? In the picture, it's difficult It's difficult to tell. It's like it a is difficult for you to... Yeah, because of the just because of the nature of it, the, the fact that it is quite a dark image, yeah. it's it's difficult to tell. It's not night, you don't think, yeah. but you couldn't be certain. And it's only the winter one. What what day was that? Because it was like a wintry picture. Yeah, it was just yeah, um, sometime in the in the winter. You can't quite okay. tell whether it's. Yeah, uh, uh, but this one seems to be all about just the lighting. It's like uh, yeah, how, uh, lighting can change a scene completely. So I mean, uh, maybe, maybe, this, the, maybe the, that's the, something the that Gerard behind might behind the clouds yeah. or mm. like, it's maybe a, a regular spring or summer day, but the just the the whole light that's around the thing just makes it seem very dark and yeah, and and a bit foreboding. Yeah, okay, um, to a degree. You get on a camera. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it's it's you know, it's interesting. I mean, uh, and perhaps that you would notice, that, um, Gerard. That I mean, you can tell that this is all done by the same artist. All of these pictures are done by the same artist. Yeah. Um, but it's also in a style that um, it's quite modern. Um, some of the techniques used, probably um, at, le at, at the most, probably only 20 years old. Hmm. I mean, that would, yeah. That's uh, peculiar. AF was it, a quite prolific to, painter. These would have to hmm. have been painted um, probably shortly before this house was abandoned. Um, yeah. If not sooner. Um, it's quite a recent style. Um, it's an yeah. Interesting case. Is anybody else looking at these pictures too? I've been playing cards. Um, okay, so you're playing patients, cards. And uh, I'm checking out the room and I noticed that he, that Gerard is peering closely at this picture. Yeah, you see, Gerald and Bill seem to be quite taking quite an interest in these pictures. Now, gentlemen, you seem Mind. to be very preoccupied Mind. with... Perfect, perfect timing. Would you, would you please come some over and uh, we've been examining these paintings as we, Gerald noticed uh, quite a difference from some that were hanging in the main hall. Uh, they are quite extraordinary, aren't the they? Yeah, so they're all done by the same artist. Perhaps you and you oh, moving they? through more literary and artistic circles would recognize the hand that painted these. Um, art is not really my thing. Um, Alfred, no, have you ever you written about art? <laughs> Transferred hands for a lot of money, but 
I can't say. I, I, I don't know. AF could be many people. How interesting. You've got quite, quite the mystery here, yeah? Well, what is it you feel is strange about these pictures? I mean, the, the Gerard, the pictures in the other room you you said didn't fit, and these you find these are are. Well, they're quite like if you look at the ones in the the dining room, they're quite simple, like almost amateurish prints. Whereas these, like the detail, the styling, like someone clearly put a lot of effort into these works with the materials. These are original works, hand work. Of art, yeah. I believe Gerard, the originals. As you uh, as you've taken a bit of an interest in these pictures, as after your colleagues are discussing them, and you you re-examine, you're kind of checking out these photos, yeah. these the photos, these pictures, these paintings. Uh, sorry, Alfred, this time, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, you've we noticed something. <laughs> We're talking about Alfred this Alfred. time. Oh, okay. Alfred, yeah. Okay. I want to give, if it's all right with you, I want to give Alfred some spotlight time, if you don't mind. <laughs> um, He's always sure. late. <laughs> <laughs> and he bets on the horses. And uh... <laughs> There's something... Of a gambling habit. There's something odd uh, about the, the pictures. There's something that strikes you as not quite right. Um, and so you... As you take a closer look at them, you notice that all of them seem to have the brick kiln showing in them. Oh, all of them. And what's in some fashion? And the weird thing about that is that you kind of you're thinking there's no possible way that the kiln could appear in some of these pictures and yet it, it's kind of left some indelible impression there um like the garden one you can kind of make out a shadow that's kind of cast across one corner um smoke the, the smoke from the top of it also is kind of creating a, a slight shadow across that the south of you you can kind of see it peeking over the pines on one side and it's things like that. It's kind of these subtle, subtle appearances in these pictures in some ways that there's no possible way that it could be in all of them. Using my background in evidence collection. Yes. Would I be able to piece together anything significant combined with my ability and knowledge and experience of the occult? Would it, would that potentially ring any any bells it doesn't been... it, it's your evidence collection your background evidence collection that's kind of revealed this to you mm. uh, in the first place it, it, it's yeah um doesn't it just doesn't add up it doesn't seem to there's nothing you can think of it like occult wise that it really makes any sense to you either um significant significant yeah significant of of some sort of uh, uh, statement about some no a, a <laughs> star like I don't know like the stars aligning and the position of them I don't know something astrology perhaps I've got I've got a background there nothing I could in astronomy the... astronomy sorry yeah yeah um hmm when else hear that Yes, Always you the music. Hear it. All right. <laughs> no, no, yeah. I, Good thing I'm not playing Cthulhu. <laughs> yeah, I think perhaps the, 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 the astronomy is one of the things that's kind of helped you notice this because you're thinking about placement of the sun at various times of the year or whatever. And that's mm. probably where you're noticing that maybe that show, it wouldn't fall like that mm. when this guy was doing, when this guy was painting this picture. That wouldn't have been there. I... I think this AF has quite a predilection towards this brick kiln. He, he's kept it in all of his photographs, in all of his paintings. Look at this, and here, and I walk over to the other one, and mm. here. And look at the shadows. That's not right for the time of year. That's not yeah. right at all. This doesn't happen. What do you... What Perhaps do you make we should it? investigate Baxter? this kiln. Yeah, it's most peculiar. Well, what yeah, would they use, a brick? Would 
they use a brick kiln for? Is well, the kiln used to make bricks? It is. Yeah. Because Perhaps we should. We noticed that kiln and a good portion of the manor house are made of the same bricks. Yes. That's correct. Hmm. I say, Baxter. I... Uh, is it normal for artists to study like this? Do they focus on one thing, repeat it in their work? Well, some artists, they, they get attached to one concept or idea or some symbol, and they'll incorporate parts of it into their works. Clearly, this kiln has some kind of significance to the artist. So perhaps, perhaps like also based on this one where this somewhat sinister one with him, the man next to the kiln, perhaps we should investigate the kiln um, when we get the chance to see if we can yeah. find any evidence there about why it was so special. Um, Fascinating. Do any of the paintings have a picture of the man in them now that we've noticed the kilns in them? No, there's just that one picture right. that has the hmm. guy in it. I, I bend, or I peer at the, the, the gentleman on the picture. Mm hmm. I wonder if this is AF himself or FA, by the way. <laughs> FA was FA. the initial. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if this is FA himself in the picture or he has painted somebody else. Yeah, why would he paint himself into the picture? People... And what would the obsession with that old ruin be? Hmm? It's interesting and I peer closer and that he's peering straight into the kiln as well. How how close is this to to the Lakeside. It's the opposite side of the house. Oh. Yes. We saw it as we came in. Yeah, we passed it uh, as we came into the drive. Perhaps in that painting, he's burning something rather than the kill itself being on fire, making something. Interesting. Maybe tomorrow morning after we've um, had breakfast, we could uh, yeah. wander down and have a, a, a quick perusal of it. Oh, it's on, it. what, it's on what, the way to the village anyway. Well, that's up to you. I will most certainly be uh, carrying on with my sport, if that's all right. Certainly. That's fine. Well, you know later. if you encounter any more unusual you, experiences, so we'll, uh, we'll uh, have a look around the grounds and investigate the kiln, try speaking with some of the locals, and perhaps we can put things right so that you can enjoy your time here. Well, that, that would be most agreeable. Have a look. For one delicious moment there, when you said you were going to have a go at speaking with, I thought you were going to say ghosts, my dear friend. <laughs> Alfred, we know finding ghosts is a glass very pork, rare please. occurrence. <laughs> very rare occurrence. Usually uh, it's the mind or the light or some very bad charlatans playing. But, I mean... Right now, she's a non-believer. Burner, <laughs> stuff her in the kiln. Very uh, non-believer. Yeah. That's not getting what burnt, getting burnt, yeah. That's getting burnt not... for not believing in ghosts. <laughs> That's not what. <laughs> Some policeman, I am. Yeah. Personally, I would like to um, see where the find the places where these paintings were made. See. The angles, uh, yes, that's yeah, interesting. or perhaps the position. Maybe if there is some kind of symbolic significance for the the kiln in these paintings, interesting. perhaps we should also find where they appear in these relative to these paintings as well. Didn't where the artist a, stood, perhaps where they stood and where this kiln is represented as being. If they're not physically, if it's not physically possible for the kiln to be where it is in the painting, then perhaps it is representation of something else in the same place. Well, how oh, very scientific of you. <laughs> quite a few things for us to look at tomorrow. Um, right now, I will partake. Um, partake? I, I will uh, excuse <laughs> myself and I will wander up to bed and I will see you all at breakfast. It's for the best. Ghost only speaks to people on their own. <laughs> Good night, Molly. Good night. I, 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 I've I, the bedroom just down the hall. If you need any assistance, you just give a shout. We'll come running. There'll be no need. Me and the mouse in my pocket. I was just wondering I what we. that was. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was my service revolver. <clears throat> All righty then. Um, so you retire for the evening. 
Uh, yeah. Last thing I want you... is Havelock showing up to a duel with a loaded mouse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, there was that, Did yeah. Did you say you shuffling, Wes, yeah? Yeah, some <laughs> shuffling, old boy. Um, you retire for the evening. There's a tournament in the in the village. I'll show you a <laughs> shuffleboard and tournament. It passes without event. Uh, you wake up the next morning feeling refreshed. Uh, the sun streaming through uh, the windows, and you head down. Do I get my point back? What point? No, you don't get your point. Bum. What are you talking about? My, bum. <laughs> honestly, what game do you think this is? You don't get long rests in this game, my friend. Um, well, you never know unless you ask. <laughs> Close your eyes and think of your Auntie Nora. <laughs> I don't have an Auntie Nora. <laughs> I go down for breakfast. Yes. Um, that you do. Um, and you have a fine breakfast laid out for you. Um, and Jack insists on going and enjoying his day's fishing. And you see him after breakfast depart, heading off down the, the, the pathway from the front of the house, down through the pines towards the river, carrying his rod uh, and uh, fishing equipment. And a hamper full of sandwiches and ginger beer. I'm sure we'll catch up with him sometime this afternoon. <laughs> yes. What is it want we want to be doing this evening? Do you want to take a little break, actually, at this moment in time? That works oh, for me. My, my all my ice cream is melted. So a cup of tea. Yeah. <laughs> that might be nice. A cup of tea. Yeah. Can do that. Have a, a quick drink and try and refresh my English accent. <laughs> <laughs> Well, as far as I'm concerned, you've all been talking like Australians. As far as, far as I'm concerned, you've been speaking like Dick Van Dyke in Mary Poppins. <laughs> Step in time! <laughs> okay. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Break. Yes, let's take a break very quickly. Yes. <laughs> a nice long nice. break. Before the BRB.
The kitchen? Did you not know? Hello, hello, hello. We're back. Are we? Are we? <laughs> that was a surprise for everyone. <laughs> we were just watching Croy being very frowny for a moment, and we were we trying need... to work, try to get his attention. Yeah. 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 30 seconds. We need like a countdown clock. Yeah. <laughs> I said 30 seconds. But... Yep. You were muted. Hmm. But anyway, I thought you were right, ignoring us. I was trying to get some stuff sorted out. Um, yeah, let's do it. Game on. Welcome back. So, it is the next morning. Uh, you have had a breakfast. Jack is going fishing because that's why he's here. What? What are you guys going to do? Spread out, squad. One room each. <laughs> practices. Um, um, I, I think we should check out this kiln. We should uh, have definitely. words with the house agent to find out perhaps what has happened to these missing paintings. Um, and he may have other knowledge about the house because perhaps folklore, the house hasn't folklore, been definitely. And also definitely folklore, folklore for those curious of the local culture. Molly has a thing about folklore. I write about folklore. That's my thing. <laughs> Game Master, you've also noticed. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was okay. <laughs> um, so we're just finishing breakfast, and um, I am chatting away about, you know, folklore has such a, an in-depth um, thing that, you know, it's ingrained into communities and... And so many ideas of ghosts and things that pe represent come from a story of people talking about somebody who'd seen somebody or an old wives' tale of what had happened, and they then they start to believe these things. And Absolutely. the reality. True. Genesis of ideas that passes down from gen through the through the ages, families telling tales to families. Ah. There's bound to the be something. The only thing I here. find strange about this is that um, normally it's somebody that knows something about the area or something that they've heard, and yet our friend only just moved here, which is interesting. So he's yet to hear the folklores or the, the rumours or the area. So. I'm wondering if there is something else that is mithering his mind right now. I mean, I mean um, Inspector Havelock also, he, he had he'd done a little bit of research before he came down here. Um, whether he shared that with everybody, I don't know. Well, there wasn't anything to share. There... Well, this is, this is the thing. There were no stories of any weird happenings in the hoose. Yeah, but whatsoever. Um, so I'm a, it's a little bit of a loss then, really, isn't it? So the well, paintings this, are intriguing. This started happen. Okay, so something I think is tied perhaps to the paintings that, for all intents and purposes, I I have a theory that, um, and actually I think it was Gerard who who broached it. I think the so-called caretaker who doesn't actually stay here and care for anything has been absconding with these paintings, selling them to enrich his or line his own pockets and something to do with something that's gone missing via the paintings or another something here may have had some sort of occult significance to this situation. So there actually wasn't anything going on until this yutz grabbed some property that wasn't his and proceeded to try making a profit off it. Perhaps we Mind should, you, that's just a theory. Perhaps we should get more evidence before we jump to all these various conclusions. I'm not jumping. I'm just <laughs> stating a theory. <laughs> well, I do think... Um, Mommy, I'm just stating a theory. What, what? There's always Brr, money. Pip. And mm. I'm sure at the seat of this, there will be quite a considerable tale of... Yes, I can see it now, the headlines. It'll be fantastic. Trevor Maj Major Manor, the, the secrets of the forgotten wealth formed by the paintings. Yes, I, I like this idea. 
Gentlemen, gentlemen, I think you are forgetting why we are here. We are here because he feels that there is a, a presence or a, something unexplained. So the pilfering of pictures and selling is fundamentally <laughs> not going to cause that, is it? Well, if it just turns out there's some vagabond or someone who has infiltrated the property while it's been abandoned, we may have to. There may be someone else completely unrelated who has taken these paintings, and perhaps Nugent has just tried to replace them in the hopes that no one would notice that they were missing or stolen. That's all very honourable, and we can solve a crime of painting pictures. Paint pictures being paintings, pinched. purloined pictures. Yes, <laughs> but we're not here for that, are we? We're not investigating art theft, am I? Oh, I'm the in the downs. I like. I it. would still rather pursue mundane causes before supernatural. Mundane ones. causes for supernatural incidents. Oh well, I'm right, here well, we for the supernatural. Needed. I'm here to prove yay or nay on supernatural. So. Um, I feel that the pictures of the kiln do have some significance to the, the to the property, and the fact that nobody has resided in here, whether they've tried and they've not, that'd be interesting. But why has nobody stayed here in twenty odd years? Well, no one has officially Eight stayed years. here. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, no one Maybe has officially we... rented the property. Is more the the information we have. Mm. Like. Maybe that's why all the locals are taciturn and sullen. They've been using this for their own personal party house. Who well, knows? that's not very English, is it? <laughs> Baxter, I, Baxter, your that idea doesn't happen. Your idea of this this positioning of these kilns outside is fascinating. I, I it's a beautiful day outside, is it not? It'll give us something to do if we wait for the cart or to send the runner into to fetch a cart to take us into town, should we wish to yes. investigate the, the local culture and residents. Well, that solicitor, he good for a story or two. <laughs> let's go and let's go and uh, wander down to the kiln and have a look. And um, yes. well, uh, Jared, did you note the positions of the pictures last night? Yes. <laughs> I'll probably just need a mental refresher out of character. Um, on all <laughs> the shall, we can go and check those out while we're yeah. out there and um, then we will go to the hamlet and uh, um, speak to the um, manager of the estate yeah. it'll take some time for the cart to arrive the yeah, the, the manager, the, the the guy that handles the the affairs of the of the, the estate, he doesn't live in the the hamlet. He lives in the nearest town. Oh, which is a long which way. Is it's not oh. too far. I mean, you 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 wrote you came here in a cab from there. Okay. Um. So you could you could go there if you wish. Um, the hamlet is much closer. Yeah. The, 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 I think the I'd rather go down to the hamlet and speak to the locals first. Can we go for a walk since it's here? I think yes. Waiting for, waiting until we get the, the means hamlet. of transportation. Perhaps Which in would the... be in with a walking distance. Yes, the hamlet yes. is within walking distance. Yeah, we will just walk down to the hamlet then. So we'll walk and um, we will walk over to the um, to the kiln and have a look and check the positioning of those the, the portraits and then um, uh, have you just lost us. Find a way. Of... Well, we can have a wonderful time now. It no longer feels like we're being watched. A bit of rambling. Yeah. Um... Especially as the GM's PC has just reset. That's not a problem at all. <laughs> well, now I don't have to talk like a blight. You're just starting. Whatever he does, what he doesn't know won't hurt him. <laughs> we'll get him back very soon. I, yes. I think it's a, fr I think it's a frightfully good idea, Baxter. Why don't we go and have a wander through? This house yes. seems to be filled with mystery and the opportunity for some filling uh, our pockets. Well. <laughs> Oh, but yes, give us at the time, and perhaps when we get to the tablet, we can. Uh, sorry. Give us two give minutes. Us, sorry. Let's do a quick advert for tomorrow's game, Croy, while I just check Mark. <laughs> Let's do it. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, quick advert for tomorrow's game. I think we're gonna have to go to. Just get out a game. We've just lost. Uh, 
We've just lost some of our members due to technical difficulties, so we're going to uh, fill some time in. Um, and we're talking about tomorrow's game. Now, tomorrow, starting at 9pm GMT, we are playing Trail of Cthulhu. Uh, we are playing Trail of Cthulhu, uh, a one-shot, which I think we're probably looking to complete in about nine hours, which if we all lived in the same town and we were all able to go around and sit at each other's tables um, and have a day of it, that would have been a, a wonderful day indeed. Um, but we've been doing it in episodes, so our one shot is now in three parts. Um, and the story so far uh, in Invasive Procedures has been one of body horror. It really has been quite a fantastic uh, different. So this is tomorrow, of course. This is tomorrow we're talking about um, at nine pm. If you if you are enjoying your spookiness, of course, it is the day that everybody knows Halloween. Uh, we are going to be playing the third and hopefully final part of this terrible tale that's set inside our old lady's hospice, uh, a local uh, community hospital at some way some way out of town. It's far enough out of town that during the terrible snowstorms that have been falling it over the past few days, it's become quite difficult to get back and forth from the nearby town. The local villagers, the local workers have been able to suffer their way through. Some, in fact, live on the hospital site. Um, by day, the hospital is short-staffed. It is not very Busy. There's a few psychiatric patients. Most have been shipped off to the new hospital that's been built up the road in the town. However, the party has been put into Ward 3. Um, and there, well, it started off, if anybody remembers, with your character Lloyd being jumped upon by a man with blood coming out Flappy of his bits. testicles. Yes. Um, and so a, a, bit of, a bit of a, a bit of a <coughs> scuffle ensued at that point, and the scuffle uh, was drawn to a close partly by the cad being thrown off the bed, and otherwise also by the nurses, regular, normal nurses wearing nurses' uniforms, coming in to uh, accost this patient and return him back to the psychiatric ward from whence he had escaped. The night was normal, the day following was normal for the, these people, these fine adventurers, uh, these fine investigators, poor patients, each with their own ailments. It cannot be said, however, for the second night. The second night, the second night in this place was, was quite devastatingly horrendous I think would be a fair assumption hey um and what happened uh, there the uh, the party the members of the, the that particular ward all had to drop um into a deep slumber induced by gas in the air um and they were two of them were wheeled out and down a corridor horrendous terrible corridor and well, the lights went out shortly after we saw uh, an incredibly fearsome looking surgeon who was pulling all manners of drills and such into their uh, vicinity. Um, one woke up with a with a headache the following day. Um, and the other, I think seemingly, seemingly unharmed, but who knows? Um, and then we left, we left the episode last week, last Saturday, with a very sharp pain appearing in the young man's head, and then the skin parting, and an eye appearing in his forehead. And that, I think, was where we'd left it last Saturday. We did. We're back! I think I'm back. Yes, he can hear you. Hang on. <laughs> oh, <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. <sighs> no, that, that, was, wasn't well, a that, that wasn't was a moment week. of panic at all. That yeah. was last week. And um, that's why this... we love IT. 
this is this is this week, and we are playing Casting the Runes. We had a, a break followed by a shortly unscheduled break, um, and uh, we saw. We just hung issues. in there a little bit longer. We could have timed it just right. So, I, I, uh, yeah, why couldn't that happen during the break? Yeah. Mm. So I'll return, we'll return back to some old pirates. Uh, people hands yeah. there with technology installed. Yeah. Hail. Um, sorry about that, people. Um, right, so you are doing something. You are heading out into the grounds. Was that right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and w- was... Was it the intention of Gerard to to kind of find the locations where these pictures were painted? Yeah, because we know we have to check out the kill anyway. We can, we really know where that is, but also yeah, to yeah. find where the pic- pictures would have been painted, and then also like yeah, try and check where the kill would have been represented in those paintings. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to uh, go with them to investigate the kiln and everything. I'll use my. Um, law enforcement skills and whatnot to see if uh, and I have my forensics. You're going to well. arrest the kiln. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> how do you how do you read a kiln that's right? Um anyway. Um <clears throat> and once once we've <laughs> examined it to our, our satisfaction, I will let them uh, try to locate those various places that the pictures were painted from. I'm going to wander down to the the uh, side of the river I it's just something's bothering me and I just I have the feeling something I, I'm worried about um, Mr. Singleton so and I will tell okay. everyone so I'll won't... go down there to, I will go down there to keep an eye on him after we examine the kiln okay so is the the intention that you're going to go to the kiln first or do you want to find out where these pictures were painted first is that the what you uh... want to do I think maybe we can start with the kiln first. I don't know. That would be the easier way of doing it. Yeah. Um, in the interest of yeah. brevity, uh, let's just say you're going to look for the the locations of these these paintings first. So, um, the first one that you 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 saw was a view of the garden. Um, and it's it's not going to be difficult for you, for for particularly Gerard with with that with his uh, knowledge of art and art history, he, it, it's quite easy for you to find these locations. Um, and you find that as you kind of step, step and stand in each of these locations, obviously it would have been different times of the year that, you know, that's a given, but on a, a majority of these places that there, there is no sign of the kiln. The kiln is just not in view. Yeah. Um, except for the one that is actually of the kiln itself. Now, what that tells you, I don't know. So, I mean, there was a one painting where the kiln was like the shadow just off to the right-hand side. It was, yeah. That's yeah. probably like the, that the one as you're looking at at the garden, yeah. and yeah, it was on that image. It was the shadow of the kiln that was kind of falling across the top corner of the painting of the garden. Yeah. Um. Which would have meant that the sun would have to have been in a particular place, obviously behind where the kiln stands, for it to fall across. Yeah. Um. I I don't know if I don't know if Gerard would be able to work that out, but certainly um, Albert would, perhaps with his knowledge of astronomy, that the sun would not have been in that place. Couldn't have cast that shadow. Yeah. So at Alfred that moment. Has... Yeah, Alfred's looking up. You see him looking up at the sky at that point. Yeah. Particularly for the time of year that it was it was it was painted. If, yeah. if the, actually, no. The weird thing about the garden is you can see the sun in the picture. That's yeah. what's throwing you off there. Yeah. So there's, there's like no a, way like that light shadow. Source. Yeah, it would have to have been a light, a light source that was bright. Would the the kiln still be in that direction where the shadow is coming from if we were standing no. here. So no. yeah, it's completely. Yeah, completely out. Yeah, interesting. Mm. So we could try and work out where the kiln would have been in that picture if it how, was in the place close, it was supposed to. Basically behind the house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And are the other ones nearby? Can we kind of do a? Have we got yeah, enough but, of a knowledge to walk between the different sites? Yeah, um, yeah, you can oh, yeah, you can yeah. do that. 
And the point was rather than where the kiln is in relation to where the picture was taken, like the actual kiln. It's like where the kiln is kind of represented, like in the space. It's like oh the, right, I got yeah. Oh, I see what you mean. So, so like, rather than in real life. Where, yeah, so like the workout in that picture, like where the kiln would have been, if you kind of. Do you want to spend a point of art? Uh, for that. I think I may have missed it off. Um, I'm pretty sure you've got art, mate. Yeah, I got art, art. history. Um, I think I may have forgot to drag over art itself. No, it's, it's, it just it's make it the art history one. Then let's go yeah, for that. Okay. We'll go for that. Um, yeah, play that one. Yeah. Um, it, yeah, particularly on that one with the garden. The obviously the sun is in completely the wrong place for the for the kiln to be yeah. casting that shadow. Um, maybe maybe the kiln is in. If the sun had been on the opposite side of the sky and shining down yeah. across, maybe maybe you could have got a, a shadow from that. Yeah, falling across the garden. But you doubt it. Due to the distances involved, the height of the yeah, um, the height of the kiln, and the fact that it they, from where the sun is currently positioned on that picture, it would be noon. Hmm. It would have to have been a lot lower in the sky for that shadow to have reached, to have been cast across the garden from the brick kiln. It's not like it's that high, particularly a noonday sun. Yeah, it wouldn't. Yeah. Looking at the, yeah. pl the other places that we identified, are they at all in a line toward the kiln itself, or no. are they are they kind of do we are we no. able to determine? If and all that's spread? probably the, the, the yeah. oddest thing about it is that it is, it's kind of random. I guess maybe the best way of looking at it is that the the artist, whoever he was, he just for some reason had to paint the kiln into that picture in some way that's the only thing that can you can think it doesn't matter where it is it doesn't matter if they can see the kiln no. or not he's just added it regardless yes yeah so it's represented mm. in some fashion mm. so it must have been very important the kiln is everything mm. can we see it from where we are like is it? Clear, is it a clear path to where we are to the kiln <laughs> yeah you can walk across the uh you can follow the road up. Yeah, so um, I'm saying like if the if the sun was like at sunset, where you'd have that shadow, would the shadow still lead to where the kiln would have been? Um, really, because the thing is, in a, if it was on the south side, it wouldn't it be on the other side of it? I, I, you know, I'm I'm gonna say no. Yeah, that, and that's probably the yeah. honest. As I say, it all just seems incredibly random. It's imagine. it's it just means yeah. that whoever was painting it, yeah, so felt the need yeah. to include okay. the kiln yeah. in some way. So the kiln's relative location is irrelevant. It's just that yeah. they had to have the kiln in the picture. Yeah. Is what we're getting. Yes. Okay. So it's just the influence of the kiln itself. So we should go check that kiln. Yeah. Um, and you, f you follow it in the, the, this late spring, early summer sunshine. Uh, it's a, a glorious day. Uh, a few white puffy clouds ca scattered across the sky. Um you make your way along the, the, the gravel driveway and then follow the road up along the east side of the house the way you came in um, and climbing over into the, the field at the side you can see this, this, this brick kiln kind of reaching up into the sky uh, just ahead of you uh, and you make out what is looks like a, perhaps an old uh, clay pit nearby, which must be where they got the clay for the bricks. Um, there's The whole structure is choked with weeds, ivy, bramble, uh, just everywhere. Um, to kind of get into the kiln itself would probably take quite a bit of, uh, of effort, and maybe you'd require sort of like a scythe or something to get through. Uh, not yet, Ange. We're getting there. Um, and you see this thing stretching up, looming ahead, and it—it's—it's 
you get that same unsettling feeling that you had when you were viewing it from that the painting. Um, as you approach, you can obviously see that it's in a bad state of repair. The brick shaft itself is kind of halfway up. Uh, some of the, the bricks have collapsed inward, leaving this gaping hole in the side. Um, and the, you can see these the, the entrance way to the kiln choked with bramble. It seems that we can't get very close to it. Nature seems to have... I mean, you could. You could take a bit of effort, but you could do it. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I'll go, I'll go through, but like I can push through a path or find one at least. Yeah. We probably just stomp it through. Yeah, it's going to take you a, a little bit of time to kind of yeah. to do that. It's quite choked up. Um, but sure, you kind of stomp your way through to the entrance. I've got a little picture of the uh, building itself just here, if you like. Um, oh, that's <clears> not how I imagined it. Is it not? No. <laughs> Did you imagine like, like a little tiny home? home almost. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of am. Yeah, it was sort of like a sort of with, with a little. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you 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 push your way through these creepers and and brambles, and it, it as I say, it takes you a little bit of time. Um. And as you're kind of approaching that, you have architecture, don't you? Um, does anybody else have architecture, or is it just uh, Geron? No, no, I've not got it. I do. <clears throat> do you yeah. need a, a point for it, or just... No, 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 no. Okay. Um, as you're kind of trampling through this bramble, uh, you're kind of looking around. You can you, you kind of notice that this, this kiln it probably hasn't been used for at least, um, well, about maybe 10 years or so. Um, and the the hole in the side of it, that is where it's falling in. That that's kind of natural erosion, as opposed to being any kind of deliberate act. Yeah. Yeah. Um, have a nose around. And you managed to. Sorry. No, Karen. So. No, as you kind of push your way through the entrance. Yeah. You see um, some rusted kind of metal doors leading onto the kiln itself that are kind of hanging off. Um, where the where the the, the 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 side of the kiln has collapsed inward, uh, a pile of bricks um, kind of basically just covers the the floor of the kiln, uh, piled up. Uh, yeah, but it's uh, quiet. Look around just to see if there's any bits of like anything that may have been left behind or discarded on the floor of the kiln. Uh, it could take a bit of time. I mean, as I say, this these yeah. bricks are kind of scattered around the yeah. area. You might have to spend a bit of time like a, kind of clearing them. Um, all so, we, is, is it cleared enough space? And we've walked into the, that doorway. If, if you wish to follow. Thing. I, I I follow. Yeah, and as I enter, mm -hmm. I have a look round and. Um... I'm thinking perhaps if we tidy this place up a bit, we could perhaps see if there's anything that had been left behind here. Yes. Um, so it's it's, actually something was burned here, like that painting suggested. Oh. Um, just seems like a, just a, an old brick-making building. I don't know quite what the obsession is with it. I'm sure we have to it to find certainly out. gives you um, something of an unsettling f feeling uh, here. It, it's... Maybe, you know, it's an old structure, it's a little bit derelict, and they, you know, those kind of buildings, they do kind of give you, uh, they give a certain vibe, which, which maybe you're kind of just, you, you, you're kind of picking up on. Uh, perhaps uh, whatever was being burned in here in that painting, perhaps the kiln represented some kind of guilt or other sort of mental influence on the artist. So perhaps... If there's yeah, something destroyed here, then perhaps it may have had some kind of significance. Hmm. It's quite a weird obsession, the brick making. I mean, they mm. probably used it to make the house. Especially yeah, large, in fact... A large proportion of the bricks from the house probably came from this structure. I said that. 
yeah, and there are a number of bricks that are kind of scattered around that may have, and some of them have kind of come in from the, even this building itself, it was all made from the same brick that, that the outer wall and the house were made of. Um, so yeah, that's a, a pretty good, um, a pretty good uh, supposition. Is that the word? Mm. Perhaps something was baked into the bricks. Hmm. Hmm. Indeed. Uh, so, as from from my childhood and the, the um, traumatizing stories of my my grandmother, aka folk folklore. <laughs> um, is there anything ever uh, any of her tales ever involving a stone kiln and you know creepy, icky, naughty? nasty stuff happening was it ever the center of any of her tales I, I mean it's quite likely that um, there would be some some folklore surrounding some old building somewhere it, it, it but it, whether that would is something you would be able to recall instantly um, I don't know it's it's not making it's, <laughs> I don't think that, that you're getting that I don't think you're getting that from this particular structure. There's nothing. Uh, maybe, maybe, like you say, speaking to some other people about it might yield some further information about that. M okay. Might not. But, okay. Um, yeah, there's certainly nothing that is coming to mind that stands out about this particular structure. Okay. I will. Uh, I will extract myself from the brambles and weeds and mm -hmm. thickets and so forth and take a closer look at the pit where a lot of the clay was dug up yeah um and that looks like it i mean that's all completely overgrown um by now it hasn't been used in quite some time judging by the the foliage that's kind of sprung up all around it and in it um this hasn't been used probably at least yeah, maybe even before you know, long after the the kiln yeah. had last been used. Oh, long before the kiln had last been used. It, it's difficult to say. Is it's, it's so overgrown. Okay. But yeah, maybe around the same time. Uh, Gerald, um, help me clear some of these bricks to the side, because I don't know. Maybe somebody has done something in here in the past that's some kind of witchcraft. I'm, or... I'm already on the process of doing such a thing, and the name yeah, is Gerard. Gonna, it, <laughs> You'll be what I call yeah. you. Well, I'll it's correct gonna... you every time, madam. <laughs> it's going to be, be difficult. You may want to wait outside. Uh, maybe the air inside is getting to you, the dust bath. Yeah, it will be difficult for you to do it without... I mean, you yeah. would probably need a lot of help or something to yeah. clear out any of this from the, the rubble that's collapsed in from the yeah. uh, the roof as quite extensive. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to clear... Well, uh, uh, to, uh... I mean, if we went for the main. And on the inside, it also, it's all it's all full of vines yeah. and yeah. and. What I was thinking well. is the centre bit. I was going, you know, sometimes. Yeah, burning, I, yeah. 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 You know, there's sometimes people inscribe things on the floor or something. I'm just looking for some kind of symbol, just 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 to scratch it off the list of things that could be making people believe in things. There's blood in all the bricks. I'm going, to, <laughs> I'm going to look in the, the like try to look in the, the sort of central burning like the area where they were done. Yeah, the, that and that's the, the bit part. where these yeah, most been, of these yeah. bricks have kind of come down yeah. after Damn from it. the roof. It's kind of f f fallen into yeah, that, so, that yeah. cold kiln. So we're just going to have to throw. Yeah, we're just going to throw the bricks away and. Yeah, I'm going to look, gonna I'm take, gonna look um, for anything that may have been burned rather than anything that may have been in the saucer. Yeah, uh, I, whereas I'm looking yeah. for markings. Yeah, but we're, so long as people are moving bricks, it's okay. I'm, I'm going <laughs> to use my um, evidence collection. Okay. Um, you, you, you're, well, you're looking for some kind of engravings or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, the only engravings you find are probably going to be kind of graffiti, I guess. Oh. Um, there's nothing... There's nothing unusual or occult about any of these symbols. It It, it is basically... Maybe some local youths have been in at some point and maybe scratched things into the into the brick. Or even maybe people that work here at some point have 
scratch their initials into the side. Yeah, that manservant got bored. And... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and in terms of clearing these bricks out, it's, it's going to take a lot more than just the group, your, you lot. Right. And and a couple of hours. It's it's quite a lot of um, rubble uh, inside there. That's going to take a concerted effort of perhaps several workmen, maybe. Yeah. In order to find all of that. Uh, maybe we can hire. But, I mean that you can always arrange that for that. Yeah. We hire some help in the local town, uh, Hamlet, perhaps. Hmm. After so, seeing how yeah. overgrown the uh, the pit is for yep. where the clay originally came from I'm like well we need to solve a knot today i will uh head towards the uh the uh river so that so you I can, would, yeah um you know. it's a bit of a walk back so you've got to go in the opposite direction um right. uh, the opposite side of the house but yeah you kind of make your you politely excuse yourself from uh the company and make your way back towards the river um the other three, in the meantime, are going to do. Are you planning to do something else? You, were you heading off into to to, to Lewis? Was that the not Lewis the to, to the the hamlet. Um, the hamlet? You want to go to the hamlet? Yeah, just figured um, as well that we could potentially sum, like so, yeah. summon like summon the the solicitor or whatever his name is. And do, oh yeah, right. Okay. Because he could come to the house rather than us going all the way over there. Oh okay, I get you. Yeah. Peak laziness. <laughs> sure so um uh as bill you make your way towards uh the river yeah. um it doesn't take you too long to find jack uh he's standing there in his waders um kind of almost hip deep in the water casting his line um let's let's stop that right now and go for something a bit more river-like um <clears throat> and he's seems to be completely oblivious to everything that's going on around him he's kind of casting away uh you can see that he's already caught um a reasonable amount of of, of trout um he eventually notices you as you stand on the side of the bank and he kind of waves I'll just wave friendly. I see they're biting today. It's uh, it's been a bloody good week, to be quite honest, old boy. Um, and he kind of reels his stuff in a little bit and makes his way to the embankment where you are, uh, um, where you're standing. <laughs> um, he kind of offers you some ginger beer out of his hamper. I will take hmm. one. Yeah. So. Anything to report, old boy? Not much at the moment. I'm I'm afraid. Um, we're my friends and I were investigating the kiln. It's it's a huge mess. It's fallen in upon itself. So we'll we'll have to look into hiring some help, perhaps uh, from the local hamlet, to clear yeah. things away and see if there's anything there that might be leading to some of these odd occurrences that you you've spoken of um and we yeah. want to uh we you want to the, a... the kiln is connected in some way that's a bit well odd. Yeah, it's, yes but you have to understand the way these things typically work is um something that's been in place for a very very long time um it's all sort of mumbo jumbo hocus pocus if you will but there are those that say when something's been in place for a very long time, it is sorts of, um, well, I, I guess you say it's like how we move and breathe and so on. It, it, it uh, It's like a creates its own energy. It's like it's a, it becomes a natural part of its surroundings. And when things are disturbed, eh, well, you won't call it the spirits of the land or something to that effect. It, my grandmother told me many folklore uh, or fairy tales when I was a child and you'd be surprised how some of that actually plays into the, these more unusual occurrences such as this so we're looking into that and we might have to hire a few workmen from the the local um, 
uh, Hamlet to uh, clear things away and just just to see if there's something unusual uh, within the, the kiln itself. Well, and, watch uh, out for those fellows. They're a, they're a taciturn lot, you know. Yeah. Well, I think the the coin we can offer will uh, speak well enough for our intentions, and I'm sure they'll all be appreciative of a chance to do some honest work for some honest pay. Hmm. And perhaps it'll help raise their spirits as well. That you know, the the fellow that's renting the place they've known from from their you know their their childhood is. Uh... <laughs> <Boat> of ghosts. <laughs> Bloody hell! Actually, I think that had everything to do with a small gray cat. <laughs> um, so again, I will go on to reassure him that this uh, is uh, just part of the overall investigation. He's free to keep doing his fishing, and uh, if we find anything unusual or if we find anything at all, we'll be sure to tell him. At that moment, um, Bill, you're suddenly aware as you're talking to to, to Jack um, that behind him silhouetted uh, in a gap between the willows that overhang the brook, you see a dark figure. It appears to kind of just stand there for a second, and then... I let my left hand drift up to my the silver crucifix I wear, and I'll just idly yeah. stroking it with my thumb. And it, it makes... It, it wanders then up the path, the one that you've just come down yourself... Um, towards the house. Is I will take him lightly by the shoulder and yeah. point. Is what that what you can see? Boy? What did, did he he not see? It, no, the, the figure no, seems to have was, disappeared. Yeah. yeah. You see it kind of it headed up the path, the one that you've just taken, that, that, yeah. that came across the meadow from the house. Okay. Um, yeah, kind of disappeared you, between the trees. Uh, are you done for the day, sir? Well, I hadn't planned to, old boy. No, no, no that's, that's fine. I just uh, have yourself a rest and a, and a good drink. I am going to... Uh, I want to fetch a few things from my room. Um, I'll... Just rank a quick trip back to the manor, and I'll I'll be right, right back. And I'm <laughs> okay. Uh, and you head back up the path, um, fully expecting to see perhaps a figure walking across the meadow towards the house. No, that's what I would expect to see. I know well, I'm not going to see anything. That's what, I'm gonna see see. That's what uh, I'm, but that's yeah. why I'm going. That made no but sense. You're right. It's... <laughs> the meadow is completely empty. There's no sign. Of anyone. Am I feeling that tightness in my chest or a chill like I experienced before? Why don't you make a stability roll and let's find out? Because I don't want to. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> okay. Now that I actually have my character sheet open and everything, I can click on what I need to. Well. Oh. Could you lose another point of sanity from your sanity, uh, stability from your stability pool, old boy? It's a good thing I put 12 points in that, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's almost like I knew this would happen. Yes. It, it, it's bizarre. You, you could have sworn the figure walked up the oh, path I, between I, the trees. I know, I know I saw something. It's just he's yeah. not here now. Exactly. Hmm. Right. I know now, it's the useless, other but I'll take a quick yep. look around for signs of passage. I know I'm not going to see anything, but I'll look anyway. Okay. That'll keep me busy for a while. Sure, right. No problem. While I pick up the mess. <laughs> <laughs> so, tell me then. What are the other three doing? Are you heading into the hamlet? Was that the, the plan? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it's a walk of a couple of miles. It's, you know, a pleasant day. Quite a nice day for a walk, in fact. 
Um, and you do make your way towards Trevor Major, the hamlet there. Uh, it's a Sunday. Um, and there's a small collection of houses here. And uh, a, a church. Looks like to be of uh, Norman um, origin, as it were. Uh, and a small pub with a, a thatched roof called the Tickled Trout. Um, and at this time of day, the door is open. And it looks quite welcoming. Uh, um. I, I could do with a drink. <laughs> You're not sure, Molly? Um. Come on, let's go and see who's in. <laughs> yeah, yeah I mean, I'm just wondering, would I? That's the thing. Are, are we... Are, mm -hmm. I mean, you can wait outside if you'd prefer. Do, women didn't go into pubs, did they? Uh, look, we don't care about history. Okay, I'll go in then. History's in the past. I will follow in then. Um, okay. Um, and you you enter into this um, this kind of small, low ceilinged, wooden beamed pub. It's got very quaint, actually. Um, quite a picture postcard. Uh, there's a few folk in there. Some men. Uh, they they kind of addressed. In their Sunday best. Obviously, that's not what you would consider Sunday best, as you are much higher class. Um, but they are enjoying um, a drink on a Sunday. A cigarette smoke is curled up to the ceiling and has formed a bit of a lair. Um, the barman is... There's quite a lot of jovial noise from inside the the uh, the in here, um, but it kind of changes a little as the three of you enter, and you notice a few people kind of looking you up and down, with kind of these wry smiles upon their faces, um, and the barman he kind of looks across at you. With a slightly nervous look, perhaps. What time of day? It's the morning, isn't it? It's kind of a late morning. Um, early Good afternoon. morning, my dear fellow. I think it's not too early to enjoy some of your whiskey, yeah, some of your scotch there, please. Uh, uh, what are you having there, Baxter? Uh, I just have a beer, nothing too fancy. Pray on. What can I get you, my lady? <clears throat> a, a, a sherry? Well then. How about you, my friend? My good man. <clears throat> All right, sir. Um, certainly. And he... You notice that it's kind of gone a bit hushed in here as people are kind of obviously eyeing you up you're very quite well dressed people um and they are a little bit unsure they're not sure why you are here or what your intentions are they look into their drinks a bit and then casting these glances across at you and you can hear perhaps some people kind of whispering in the far back of the room if anyone actually stood at the bar drinking... Yeah, there's a couple of people kind of standing at the bar. I eh? turn to one of the gentlemen and say, Afternoon. <clears throat> Afternoon, ma'am. Um, we're um, guests of the um, gentleman staying over at the manor house. Well, that'd be your business, ma'am. Uh, yes, yeah, I wonder if you could help me. I'm actually an author, um, and I'm doing a little bit of research on... Uh, folklore, you know, 
stories have passed down from generations to generations about strange things that have happened. Do you know if there's anything in the area? Um, I'm afraid I wouldn't, ma'am. Not that, not uh, any stories at all, ma'am. No, no. Wouldn't that your family passed down as you sat around the fireplace of an evening? I mean, he's not even looking at you as he's saying this. He's kind of looking straight ahead and taking a drink from his drink. <clears throat> Molly, if I if I may, I'd like to buy every one of you all a drink, and in return. <laughs> I'd very much like you to tell me some stories about this area. And I'm using charm. And oh, that'll charm. do, yeah. I'm using charm. Um, yeah, I forgot we have the skills. I forget yeah. we have them. I'm so sorry. And um, can okay. I, can I roll or boost or spend points? It's. Um, I, I can't even remember whether charm is an investigative or general. It's interpersonal. <laughs> it's interpersonal. In that case, you, no, um, you don't need to roll. Yeah, I, I, use, um, I use charm on the shadowy figure. Okay, well, well done. <laughs> Thank um, you. Yeah. The ghost will come for you first. He's, he's charmed by you. Charmed, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> I had to try anyway, something. My, I mean... <laughs> this... Oh, so this this, uh, this act of, 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 of buying around... Um... Uh, these these folks they seem to kind of warm to you um, a little <laughs> bit with that, um, and pretty soon you're kind of you're kind of having the silly little conversations with them. They're kind of describing, you know, what they they do for a living and bizarre things like that. And mm. maybe they're having a few little jokes at your expense between themselves as well. Um, but you know the, the tension that was there seems to kind of ease. A little bit. Um, yeah. And so you're kind of asking them about uh, stuff about the the area and whatever. Yeah. And, and you hear... And they they, they talk for a while. Um, and, and some of the stories are quite interesting. Some of the local folklore. But none of it really seems applicable to 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 what you're interested in. So they they start. You mention the house, and then you hear them uh, kind of say, "You're oh, you're staying over at uh, the manor, are you?" We are. Yes. Oh. How are you finding it? We've only been there one evening. It's very pleasant. No issues so far. What a lovely surroundings. Ask about the kiln. <laughs> no one no one stays at that house long. Bad house. Now that's what I. Now that's what I'm interested yeah. in. What the mm. kill? House come on, come on, kill! I mean, we're more interested in the house, mysterious ghost voice. <laughs> so, is there any particular reason? Like, does something happen to the folks to stay there? Well, let's just say nobody stays there very long. No one goes in there. I seen some artist fella and his wife stay there ten years ago. What happened to them? What was their name? No, I can't say. I I remember, sir. But they were the last residents of that house. Ten years ago, you say? Hey, it's about right. About that, yeah. What happened to them? Hmm. Guessing he left in 96. Yeah, it'd probably be about right. Yeah, well, that's a... Uh, yes. At least he did. Hmm. Artist he was. Can't remember his name. It's, maybe his initials are drug in memory, because we saw some of his pictures, I think, up at the house. Uh, F.A. Does it mean anything to you? Well, I never met the man. Yeah. But, as Mysterious Ghost Voice said, him and his wife stayed there for a while. Apparently she disappeared off onto the continent. Yeah, he followed yeah. shortly thereafter. Yes, I know. I have a feeling I know she disappeared. <laughs> 
<laughs> How long hmm. were they in the house for? Oh, I can't say I remember, miss. Oh. It wasn't too long, though. I think there was something about... I think there was something about him not staying as long as he had intended. So he suddenly had something on his mind after his wife went to the continent. <laughs> Most peculiar. Perhaps so, sir. Do you know what his occupation was, the gentleman that stayed there? The artist. I believe I've alluded to the fact he was an <laughs> artist, ma'am. An art, sorry? An artist, ma'am. Sorry. Yeah, I, it's all right. I know some of you rich folk, you don't hear some so well sometimes. <laughs> well. While the house has been empty, has anybody been maintaining their premises? No, I shouldn't think so, ma'am. <laughs> you know, not too many people go up there, you know. I understand that. Is there some kind of ghost story or... Well, I wouldn't know about that, ma'am, but I do know that some of the lads here, they say there's an eerie feeling around there. Oh, so, sorry, what? what? An, an eerie, eerie feeling. feeling. Oh. Jinx. <laughs> Does that mean one of us can't speak now? Neither, yeah. of, you, neither of you can talk for the rest <laughs> of the break. Uh, I have, you... A few people have mentioned this eerie feeling, but... Um... <laughs> That's why I'm wondering whether it's just... Um, Something appears to have gone wrong with the soundtrack. <laughs> just wondering if it's something to do with, you know, people's interpretation of the area rather than actual feelings. No one seems to have seen anything or heard anything. It's just they feel... Can... Can I rely upon my skill of psychoanalysis to <laughs> pull together a theory of the depends how many drinks have you had the grief <laughs> the grief experienced by someone who's trying to cleanse themselves of ill uh perhaps a traumatic event that has occurred that they're yeah. Uh, um, no, then that did I tell you? Well, so, so are we? Are you talking about somebody who has experienced a traumatic event and is trying to rid themselves of it by painting, carrying it, painting? Right. Um, you know what? Um, using your field, your of psychology or psychoanalysis. Psychoanalysis. I mean, yeah, I don't think that that would be an unreasonable conclusion. To arrive at, I mean, it. You know, people deal with guilt and grief in in different ways, um, but it's it's quite likely that maybe, maybe that, you know, yeah, you 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 think that that's certainly possible. And I've picked up on Baxter and Havelock having. Oh, Havelock's not there, but 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 Baxter, um, having a a kind of similar. Yeah, that's my line of my thought. expectation. Mm. Yeah. Um, I, I don't suppose. At, yeah, look at Baxter. Just kind of <laughs> sort of drink and just go. You want to start something? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody hell! He wants to fight everyone. Um, I know, I took right? Points in <laughs> for a reason. <laughs> unknown reason. Um, could I just ask the um, the barman? He just be like, "Do you know where we might be able to hire some hands, or perhaps get a message over to the the next town over?" Uh, Lewis. And you say, what is it you're, what is it you're wanting? Well, I was hoping, like, we're doing some investigating around the house, and there's this old kiln there that's kind of collapsed, and I was wondering if I could get a few men to come give me a hand, clearing out the old rubble and stuff, so I could uh, search it, like, dust it down for clues. Hmm. I think an ability of some kind is being used here. Um, is there any the obvious one for me? Uh, so I, no, I, I'm thinking bargain. bargain? Yeah, I can do bargain. Yeah. I was close. Okay, if you want to spend a point of bargain, 
Yeah. I think I think that these guys you can convince a few of these guys to to perhaps come out to you in a day or so. Yeah. And and maybe clear out that or help start clearing out that that kiln. Certainly, yeah. I reckon. Excellent. And if we could get yeah. a message over to Lewis, we are trying to summon uh Mr. S- Mr. The solicitor, Mr. Nugent. Nugent. Nugent mm. is the uh, mm. Ted, the overseer of the uh, the uh, the property. Um, yeah. I as part of that, then let's just say that that yes, yeah, somebody can ag- yeah. uh, agree to kind of get a message Same out message. there. I mean, I'd imagine there's even a telephone at the the house, to be yeah. quite honest. Right. Um, so that that's certainly easily achieved. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I wasn't sure how stately the home was. It's it's not yeah <laughs> it's not that stately but it yeah right. you know there there are there are things there that would certainly okay. be uh you know there's a, there, yeah let's say there's a phone That's, that okay. makes sense to me cool um okay let's we'll skip back to Bill are you doing anything else Bill or do you want to come back to the are you P A R T Y well yeah. Um, well, he seems okay. I'm not finding any sign of the shadowy figure. No, you don't. Um, and that, that's the, that's the reason why you probably lost, um, a little bit of stability. The fact that there's no sign that anybody passed this way at all. No sign. You were clear. You saw a figure clearly. It was, and it was definitely a man. But um, yeah, I will uh, <laughs> heading back down the path. I'll make sure the Lord or the Lord uh, <laughs> Jack is still doing okay. Yeah, he's he's okay. I keep wanting, because it's a manor house and all this stuff. I keep wanting to address him as you yeah. know. Some You're sort thinking of, Downton so. Abbey, aren't you? That's the yeah, thing. Prob- probably. Um, and he's you know, out there fishing away, and it's like okay. Uh, I will yeah. head down to the the local village then or hamlet uh, to hopefully meet up with my friends and let them know I have had a unusual experience. And yeah, see if um, they've learned anything talking to the locals. Yeah, um, so I I guess that's quite reasonable to assume that you can kind of meet up as you're making your way back towards the house. Huh. Um, yeah, and you discuss what it is you found. Each of you, I assume. <laughs> Our friends are not going to believe this, but uh, as I was uh, checking on uh, his layered ship down there at the riverbank, I happened to glance up the trail, uh, the one I had just come down not long ago. I saw a shadowy figure. It was definitely a man, and I'll give the general description. You know, yep. uh, I couldn't make out any um, physical features to him. Uh, he turned and headed up the path, and I excuse myself hastily from his company and uh i ran up the path and there was absolutely no sign of either the figure or or any that anyone had passed that way at all i know what i saw interesting havelock how interesting oh my some you strangers on the property or perhaps he was chasing his own shadow you're chasing (laughs) down my word sir i am intrigued and Quite frankly. You know I got a firearm, right? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, yeah, actually I do. Um, so after not being able to find any trace of the uh, the figure in question, I hastened back down the trail and made sure that Jack was okay, and then I came to meet up with you. And How did things go in the hamlet? Did you learn anything? It seems there's the usual s- stories and just talk of ill feeling over at the house. But nothing specific. Well, we've managed. They to did talk- mention the the last tenants were the an art the artist, which I presume is probably the fellow who made the paintings. It is a uh, wife who mysteriously left to travel the continent shortly before he left the property. Mm, where have I heard that one before? Have a look. <laughs> Uh, when you were I listening did. in on us earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I was I referring to my uh, career as a policeman, but yeah. 
I've also hired some workmen to clear out the kiln so we could perhaps do some thorough investigations. Um, um, once they are finished. I'm concerned about what we might find, but I'll be, I'll be there to lend a hand. One worry at a time, friend. Yes. <laughs> I want to <laughs> just I want to wreck on a little bit. Which is about a little much bit use since I've been there. Um would um would Gerard be willing to spend a point of credit of credit rating of class? class. Uh, sure. Um I think that's probably more appropriate for them getting Rather these bargain. guys to to get to get these guys to come and work. Sure. Okay. Yeah, I think that Have makes luck. more sense, especially. Have luck, my friend. I assure you, my interest in your sighting is entirely sincere. There's no need at all to threaten a weapon in this house. <laughs> oh, this that guy. is very ungentlemanly, and I am understanding you that you to? might be <laughs> on threat, but it's not necessary. Yeah. I would be, I'm not stressed to take that back! I would be quite <laughs> happy to investigate this uh, occurrence of a dark shadow that mysteriously disappeared. I find this fascinating. I'm just pointing him up the trail. Knock yourself out. <laughs> I will come with you, Alfred. Seems interesting. Let's go. Let's wander back. And he breaks out one like one of those little ectoplasma detectors. So I'm gonna be so mad. Have look, come with us. Walk with us, please. Walk with I'll, us. I'll bring the EMF. <laughs> all right, let's all, we'll let's walk all back stick across together. the trail. Back. Thirty meters. Signal's okay. clean. If everyone appreciates that it knocked me down an entire leg of social standing just to get a few men out to clear the kill. <laughs> I'll pat him on the back. That a boy. Dedication yeah. to the cause. Want a ginger beer? I never drink this stuff. <laughs> yeah. You um you make your way back down. Are you heading back towards where Jack was? Um, yeah, yeah, because yeah, it was down by the, the river, and up yeah, the hill, yeah. right? I mean, I came down Follow the other up. way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so so Havelock leads you down through the the trees, the willows that um that the path kind of threads its way between. Uh, you arrive at, at the river. You see Jack. He's kind of sitting on the the, the embankment there. He seems to be packing up for the day, um, and uh, he kind of waves uh, as he sees you approaching. Oh, wave again! And um, he gestures to this uh, this huge amount of trout that he's caught once again. Bloody hell! Would you believe it? <laughs> It's well, like done, river. Just, just full of trout. Well played, Jack. You can't miss. Well, it's good to hear that. Despite all the commotion up in the house, that uh, nothing is uh, like setting you back on the, the fishing front. Well, I have to say, it's probably the only thing keeping me in the house, to be honest. Singleton, have you, ha have you had any wind of Havelock's shadow? Has it visited you before? Have you, have you witnessed it? No, that's the point. Did I I I, I, uh, I did. I placed. I, see, you mentioned yeah, I saw. Yeah. I, and it's like I pointed him up there, and he didn't see anything. No. So I said, I think I did. Uh, you stay here. I'll go look. Look. Um. No sign. Well, I I didn't see the chap. I feel he was there, watching us. Hmm. As always. Peculiar so you feeling. felt his presence, but you didn't see him. Well, this time, sometimes I have been, you know, I've caught him out of the corner of my eye. I don't know who the chap is. But I have noticed him there, of course. Bill, why did you see him? No. Well, yeah, he, was, it, uh, up, he stepped out of some trees at the, like, the top of the trail, right? Or Yeah, that's right. I mean, and, and Bill, you can point pretty much the exact spot where you saw him in and there's like um, some weeping willows that kind of are reaching down over towards the river mm -hmm. um, the path that kind of winds between them, the one you've just walked down uh, and Bill kind of points pretty much where this guy, had, this figure had stepped out from these trees and stood there um, on the embankment we can't see there's... anything now yeah, yeah, there's nothing, there's nothing. I, I, want, I wander up. I wander up towards the towards the trees. Yeah. It's just well, a figment of the sun and the light. Let's wander up, and I'm sure we will see absolutely nothing there. Anyone walking with me? 
Yes. Oh, I'll go up there. We wander hmm. over towards I'll, the trees. I'll uh, stop for a minute where uh, where nothing, and I'll uh, yeah. pull up my silver flask and I'll dribble a little bit of holy water in it, and I'll just kind okay. of in the area where I saw him. Hmm. Okay. I've got there yet. <laughs> no, you have. I mean, it's right there on the embankment. This is you've walked past it already. You came down the path to so it. So we walk around, see if there's anything, uh, look for any footprints. Uh, use my evidence again. There's a collection. See if there's any newly disturbed grass or anything up there. There's no sign that anybody's passed here, except the path, obviously, that leads through. There's no sign that anything passed through these trees whatsoever. Sure, you just saw it was just a figment of your imagination. There's nothing here. There's I'm... nobody stood here. Don't take that tone with me. I'm not one of your charlatans. I'm not the mm. kind of person you pursue day and night. I am a trained professional, and I know what I saw. They don't keep looty tunes on the in Scotland Yard. If I weren't good at my job, they'd have let me go a long time ago. I know what I saw. And what you think you saw. Now, now, Molly, it's quite obvious there's a story here. We have a, a option here. We can find out what's going on and what Havelock's seen and solve the mystery of what's watching Jack as he's fishing at the shore. Or... Well, that's pretty much finished for the day, to be quite honest. I'm pretty sure I couldn't carry any more back to the house if I wanted to. Well, let me help. Out, let me lend you a hand, for tea Jack. again. Let us help you. <laughs> a couple, couple stringers of fish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and your small group <laughs> makes their way back up to the house. Um, and it's probably kind of afternoon, late afternoon now. Um, and as you approach, uh, you see that Franklin has set out the chairs on the front of the house again, as as he had done the previous evening. Uh, time for a spot of tea, I think. I'm sh I'm sure as I hold up a couple of the stringers, he's <laughs> probably rolling his eyes like, "Oh, she's not fish again." <laughs> <laughs> tea would be a splendid idea. Um. And so, yeah, you, you, I, you find yourself, when my yes. tea is, is mm -hmm, take out the pewter flask. Luke. The one with the whiskey in it. The yeah. one with the whiskey in it. Sure. Luke. <laughs> Put a dollop in my tea. Ugh. Um, uh, yeah, uh, so... So you find yourselves sat on the, the nice, front of nice the, one cry. the house. Nice one, Croy. Bought around with my charming wallet. <laughs> <laughs> um, once again in the evening, they, the, the kind of the blue sky slowly turning uh, a, a darker shade um, as the sun begins to set. But you can see there's like um, the, the clouds above you. They're kind of uh, the, the oranges and blues like a almost like fish scales uh the mackerel sky indicating that maybe you know tomorrow's weather is going to change and jack indeed remarks oh, looks like rain tomorrow Bugger. the air is completely still not a breath of wind but then you all suddenly feel this odd i was just going to say as things are winding down i am going in the house <laughs> okay, I'm going to sit out here where the chill wind came through and pushed this through my pectoral muscles again. No way! <laughs> Could you please make me stability rolls, please? Uh, no. What was that? I missed. We, we that had strange. Chill. Yeah. That strange sensation. I hate this game. <laughs> Some two. I roll that then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Oh, wait, that wasn't um, enough, was it? <laughs> no, it's fine. Oh, um, God. All right. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. Um, it sends a chill through you, and you kind of, you shiver, and goose pimples kind of uh, pop up on your skin. Um, and then you suddenly hear the, um, the door behind you 
uh, it creaks open. And then... The door we closing. all came in? I mean, the front, It's the front door. You're kind of sat out the front. Uh, so behind you, it, the front door is kind of behind so you. So someone, it's like someone came past us, opened the door and closed it. Somebody or somebody the on the other side has opened the door. Yeah. It kind of opens. Um, and then you, it kind of slowly closes again with a click. Is Franklin still here with us? Or is he... Yes, yeah, he's uh, Fra Franklin's kind of serving you um, Pim's cup and and is Mr. Frank Mrs. Franklin pottering around indoors. I, I I jump out of my chair and I bolt for the for the front door, and I hmm. try the I try the handle. Okay. Um, as you kind of do that, you kind of hear kind of hurried footsteps inside the house. Come on! What is it? An intruder? Yeah. Do you want to take a quick? Uh, do you want to take another quick break? Is that the? Yeah. 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 Because uh, take a quick break. I, I, I wouldn't want to. Well, yeah. Bio break. Ooh. Yeah. Bio break, folks. <laughs> Sorry. Bio break. We'll be right yeah. back after this commercial. Um, but don't worry.
There we go. We're back. Or open the door. Is it locked? Uh, no, it's not. Oh. Uh, the door opens normally. Um, you push it inward. Um, and inside, you can see uh, the lights. Some of the oil lamps have been lit. Uh, inside um, and at the, the bottom of the stairs you can see uh, Mrs. Franklin and and she's she's kind of standing there she's looking upward up the up the flight of stairs at me uh, or she looks, she's down oh, here and oh, she's looking she's down up. she's down at the bottom of the stairs uh, you've kind of come in the door kind of behind her as the door opens she kind of swings around and she looks at you she looks very pale I um, run and to her and, side with my my left hand over my crucifix and are you yeah. all right? What is it? Oh, oh and then I, I and then I look up the stairs. Yeah. I'll okay. Come right and, behind the moment he sort of legs it in. Yeah, I, I think Jack probably comes in too. Um, yeah. And uh, and she she kind of says, Mister Jack, Mister Jack, I I, I I I was just up in your room. I, I was tidying I, I tidying your room. I, I I thought you came in, but when I looked, that there was there was nobody there. It gave me a frightful turn, sir. I left my candle there. I left my candle there. I. She looks uh, up the stairs really nervously. I, I I must go up for it. She says. Well, don't go up alone, Adam. In case there is a intruder or something in the house. Yeah, I'll 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 go with her. You come uh, with me, I... and we'll get you a drink in the in the um in the study. The gentleman can go up That's and retrieve it. I'll go. I'll go. I'll go up with Willie. Um. Yeah. No, no, miss. It's honestly. It's, no, you it's need. Right. You've had a fright. Come, come through to the um. The, to yeah, take the, her to the sitting room. Living please. area. I'll, and I'll, I'll go and check some of the other rooms just in case the some blinders manage to find their way in here. Okay. I take her and sit her down, and I go to the decanter on the side and pour a, a drink. Yeah. And sit with no, her. miss. Honestly, there's no need. It was. I'm just being a silly old lady. That's. That's uh... fine. You just calm your nerves, my love. Um, said my love. I don't know. Oh, um, oh yes, that's so you, much better. Bill and and Bill and, and Gerard, you, you kind of head up the stairs. Um I'm moving slowly, my right hand securely grabbing the banister as I advance sure. up the stairs. Sure. And I've got my got yeah. my left hand around my silver crucifix. The thing that you kind of notice is that 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 odd feeling, the sensation that you had on the uh, the previous night that you just had outside, yeah, you did feel it again. Um, although well, the previous night when you came inside, it vanished, but it's still with you. You make your way slowly up the stairs, yeah, um, and across the yeah. the landing towards the master bedroom. Yes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold my cane up like defensively, just <laughs> in case something like comes out of this. Um, the door is slightly ajar, okay. um, and as you kind of 
you you I'll wonder take my crucifix off from around my neck so I've got it held yeah. like so and I'll lean against the door the outer edge of the door jam and I'll push the door open with my foot yeah and, and inside you can see uh, just it, it's Jack's bedroom you can see the bed the window there yeah. uh, the curtains are still open uh -huh. um there's a, a kind of slight light, perhaps from the moon, that's kind of coming in through the window. Bloody hell, it uh, got dark quick. <laughs> the candle is there on the, the nightstand. Uh, a faint wisp of smoke uh, is blowing up from it. Mm. But at least um, we don't have to worry about it catching a fire. It is, no, but there's, you didn't, you didn't <laughs> there is not it, a drop, not a breath of wind in the room. Must be a duff candle. Hmm. I went out when she you know, when she screamed or, ah, you know. Yeah. All right. I'll fish out one of my matchsticks. Well, we should maybe mm. just return the candle to her. We don't need to worry about lighting it. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. All right, then. I'll step forward and... Uh, yeah, I'll hold the door. Pick up the candle. Should I just close Molly it? Molly <laughs> and... Um, Albert, you kind of hear the, the this distant ring, uh, one of the servants' bells, um, and Albert's kind of you've you've done a little scout of a few of the house uh, of the few of the rooms in the house there on that floor, and you haven't found anything uh, suspicious, um, and you kind of make your way back into the hallway, and you can see Franklin, uh, he kind of crosses the hallway, um, just ahead of you. Uh, to the sitting room where Molly and Mrs. Fran Franklin are waiting. Um, and he kind of pushes the door open and you hear him say to, to Molly, um, uh, you rang, ma'am? Sorry, no. The bell, ma'am. What bell? Did we was, all hear it? I, I was mean... just walking away into a different room. I didn't touch anything. You haven't rang a bell, is it? Oh, do you still use the servant spells in these out this building? But oh, well, uh, certainly, ma'am. Did, um, did we actually hear the bell ring, though? I mean, no, it, you, you didn't. You were upstairs. Um, oh, 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 okay, sorry. Yeah, but um, certainly, um, her, uh, Albert certainly did hear it. I never heard a bell, and we haven't. Alfred, we haven't. We, we haven't rang a sorry, bell. Sorry, Alfred. Yeah, we haven't heard, and um, we. Sorry, sorry. Um, hmm. Perhaps... Perhaps a, a, a mouse on the wire, ma'am. I look over to what, to where, where the bell... Is it a bell pull or a button? Yeah, it's yeah. yeah. Is it moving? No. Um, I go over and I, and I say... Um, go over and I pull... Bell. Oh, well, no, we didn't do that. Well, um, as I say, ma'am, perhaps a mouse on the wire. Probably so. Um... Yeah. And he, he shoots a glance at his wife and he goes to leave looking um, a little bit. Franklin. Can I use um, yes, assess honesty while he's talking you certainly can yeah um and yeah he's he seems to, to believe that somebody is from this room has rang that bell mm. um so his look uh and his and, wife and was he's one now and, he, and now that he's at, he's as he's kind of mentioned uh, perhaps a mouse in the way you can see that he doesn't necessarily believe that mm. um and he's looking a little bit nervous mm. franklin Yes, Let's be honest here. Is this has something? Always, ma'am. Is this something of one of the things that has been unnerving you? Bells ringing. You can tell well, us. Well, that's interesting, ma'am. A similar instance happened happened earlier today. Oh, well, we well, were all out. Well, oh, nobody we was in the upstairs. No. Uh, yes, indeed, there was no one else in the house at the time, ma'am. 
Um, I, I, maybe there's a fault on 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 the bells. Maybe um, we we could get some repair them. Maybe, Have you maybe seen? That's I, it. I, can I use can I use a point of reassurance to try and get him to open up and talk to us like? As ca even if he's got his deeper doubts that he might have, and he's maybe got a theory that you might not want to share. For fear, uh, are you sure? What, what kind of what what is it you want to be? What is it you want to say to him that might? What yeah, is it you want so to? I, I, Tell me what you know or I'll know. <laughs> I walk over um, to to where he is. He's, he's in the doorway or something. Is he about to leave? He is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I close. I sort of take the door out of his hand. Um. um and just close it softly, not violently or anything, you know, just just carefully. Um, and I say to him, Franklin, you say there's been yes, things sir. going on. I would be interested in you being very candid about what you think they are. I assure you, my writing is of too, too much importance to pass up. Uh, even the folk tales that you might have, there must be some theory that you have, some concern. I'm sure you've put it together. I would hear it, if you would be well, so kind. I'm begging your pardon, sir. I, I really do not know. It's how, sir. There are. There is a, a, a feeling about it, if you get my meaning, sir. Yes, I've experienced something of what you're talking about. I am open to such possibilities. Well, it's me and a good lady there, you see, sir. We've both remarked upon occasion that we've felt like there was some kind of presence within the house. That, you know, perhaps we were were being observed, as it were, as we went about our daily duties. If you take my meaning, sir. Of course, and do you it, find... It's quite unnerving, especially for, for, for the good lady there. I, I do not wish to speak ill of anything, sir, but... This house... It's not all right, sir. It's not right, sir. And 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 Mrs. Franklin, she kind of looks up and he says, "It would be nice if 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 Mr. Jack would perhaps take to his senses and head back to London as soon as possible." No disrespect, sir. No, of course not. We well, thank are... you for your kindness, ma'am. She says, looking at Molly. I I but I, I really must go ahead and prepare dinner. I'm sorry, sir. You were saying? I wouldn't expect you to stay around. I heard something. One of... A, lo a local tale. About... That man who painted those... And I point through to wherever the, the room is. Mm. His wife disappeared. Or left. Do you know, have, did you hear anything about that, perhaps, in your travels in the shops or talking with some of the local suppliers? It's not something that has come to my attention, sir. Ah, well. Again, no stone left unturned. Franklin, thank you very much. You've been most hospitable and you've looked after us very well. And I'm using charm well, again to try and yeah, keep excellent. Kind of... Yeah, um, and he appreciates that and there's a, a, a smile uh, a slight smile crosses his face and he nods in appreciation and Mrs. Franklin kind of gets to her feet and she she thanks you profusely Molly uh, I dear, I'm so sorry dear I I, I really shouldn't I, I must be I must I'm terribly sorry I must get back don't you worry these things are, are shocking and you're feeling unnerved these things can be quite distressing to apologise uh, she looks at you a little bit quizzically what things do you refer to ma'am the the when the thing when mm, things <laughs> mess with your mind and you believe that there's something around it 
old buildings. There's a history. There's noises. Oh, yes, ma'am. Oh, yes, ma'am. And unfortunately, when you're out here so isolated as you are, your mind can play tricks on you and you can start to believe that there's something occurring when it actually might not be. Indeed, ma'am. I'm sure you're right. I'm sure you're right. I'm sure um, she is. To Molly. Are you... <laughs> Are you I, I, I let her, I, 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 I look at him in a, in a manner of, please be quiet, and as I usher her out the room and shut the door. <laughs> I shut the door and I just turn around and go, oh, there's something definitely strange going on here. Yes, it seems that the staff are very unnerved. I cannot possibly mis discount the, the realms of perhaps a, a haunted spirit who's looking after the place to see that nobody else finds something that they shouldn't, perhaps. Well, I, I don't uh... really know about that. And I go over and I start checking the, the bell pull and go, <laughs> I definitely didn't pull that bell. And she you, wouldn't... Are you really going to ring the bell? No, I'm not you? going to ring it. I'm not going to ring it. I'm going to, like, lift it up, just kind of lift it up to I see... Do yeah, any, I mean, any how wires? does this work? It's a very simple thing. It's basically just a long wire yep. that is attached from a pull to a bell in the servants' quarters, and that's oh, how. Yeah, no. What, what I'm looking at, you know, the thing that bedroom. Hey, 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 I'll go over there. <laughs> and we'll all ring the bells all. <laughs> I'm looking to see, you know, the thing you pull down to to, to, mm. to make it go. I'm just looking to see, like, if there's anything connected to it. I know it sounds suspiciously as if, like, if she was sitting there and there was a long wire connected to it and she pulled it down or something from where she was. I've just seen if anything connected to the pull down. That's all. Yeah. Well, I'm watching Molly do that and I'm, I'm mm. just talking to her while she's doing that. I'm saying, Molly, I don't think we can discount a ghost in this situation. What do you say to that? <laughs> I'm, I'm quite fascinated. My, well, I wouldn't perhaps publish it in the Times, but. Well, you hear things, don't you? You find things, and uh, I, I know you're it's of a similar mind. We're clearly dealing mm. with the haunted spirit here of perhaps the, the artist has met his demise somewhere. I think Baxter has got a very good line of inquiry. I suspect his his troops are going to find a body underneath there. What do you say to that? Very exciting, isn't it? I think, I think it was the. Oh. Um, if he was there, I would say, ask, I would ask him again to ring the bell and to prove that he was there. I mean, why would he be there? But these things don't happen like that, do they? They're supposed to be there, but they don't seem to respond to us. Let's find the others to see if they've seen, found anything upstairs. Uh, I mean, by now, um, both. Uh... Baxter and Havelock have come down the stairs bearing this this candle that has gone out. Um, yeah, and perhaps you, you're witness to the tail end of this conversation. Seems that, um, gentlemen, that while I was in here with uh, Mrs. Franklin, that um, servant's bell was rang, but neither me or Mrs. Or Mrs. Franklin rang the bell. Very interesting. Wasn't I? Nor I. Who knows? Hmm. Could, be, could be a fault anywhere along the line, but it seems there's, there's a few there's a things. Really nice lady with the candle. A few things interesting. Maybe, maybe some more things will occur for us to witness. Yes, we can solve this problem. What I think we have here, gentlemen, ladies, is a fine example of a class A haunting. Quite fantastic. I've had. Some talk from friends about these. They swear on their lives that they saw a strange figure or a, a light shining through the Alfred, window. Alfred, Alfred, calm I'm... yourself. There yeah. are many stories, but yet anything to be proven and, and here we are anything yet to be seen. Right now. Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> yeah, we have seen shadows and subject. we've seen shadows and feelings so far. Yes, but such strong, intense feelings. Feel it back of your neck like the something. Do you feel the feelings? <laughs> feelings. That might just be the opium. <laughs> well, that's true. Nothing more than feelings. But usually by this time of the day, it's worn off. <laughs> well, 
Let's go to dinner. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. And, and yes. you have a, a very pleasant dinner um, of baked Fish. trout. Uh, sh- uh, trout yeah. baked in champagne. Um, wow, that's uh, different. The freshly caught trout. Nice. And, yeah. And it, it, once again, a fine meal, um, followed by port and cigars. Um, nothing else of interest happens uh, that evening. Is there that anything night. that anybody would like to do, or um, do you just want to kind of cut to the, next to the chase? <laughs> yeah, I think if nothing, you know, I'll do the usual conversations and things like that, and I will head up to bed again. Yep. Excellent. I'll ask if there's a telescope anywhere in the building. I'm afraid I didn't bother to bring one of those, old chap. <laughs> Brought the old fishing equipment, you know? Nah, too bad. Uh, do you have access to the roof anywhere? Um, You could just stand outside. Well, I suppose that is an answer. There's a little bit of cloud coming, to be quite honest, old boy. I'm yeah, not sure you'll be able clouds. to see too much. Oh, where's the fun in that? And I walk to the front door and open up and stand outside. Okay, uh, and you stand out, and the the air is chilled somewhat. Um, that odd feeling that you had earlier has kind of carried on for all of you uh, throughout the entire um, evening, and uh, you still have it as you kind of step out. You step out of the front there onto the gravel drive. You're looking up at the sky. You can see the clouds that are kind of coming in. Uh, okay. You can almost feel that. The, the inclement weather that is on its way. Yeah, I'm just looking for the stars. If I can't see any, I just sigh and yeah, shrug you, you and do, turn around. You can catch a couple. You can catch a couple, but um, they're generally the brighter ones anyway, which mm. are probably of less interest to you. Mm. Oh, what a night. I just turned, grabbed the door handle and walked back in again. Yeah. Um, no stars for uh, you. No. Uh, that evening... I told you. Gerard. Yes? At some time in the early hours, Uh, you are awakened. You feel... You're not sure what it is. Something has awoken. Have you seen my body slippers? (laughs) And there's... After a few... You kind of... you, you, You sit there, listening for a few moments and then you hear kind of perhaps footsteps in the corridor outside and And then to my feet yeah and as you do that you're aware of there's a faint squeak as it feels like your door handle is turning i'm gonna go up to the door you stand at the door like put the hand stop the handle be like, Bill, is that you? Like loud. Yeah. Bill, cut it out. I'm trying to sleep. <laughs> Who's there? There's no reply. Ah, oh, curse you. Shuffling feet once again. Shuffling or, or rapid footsteps? Uh, yeah, footsteps. Yeah, yeah. Perhaps well, shuffling is the wrong word. Yeah, just kind of sh- uh, just footsteps outside and once again. And uh, then it going goes away home. from the door. Yes. Yeah, I'll creak the door open and have a look. See who's there. The corridor is pitch black. Um, all the lights are out by now. Um, there's no sign of movement out there at all. Um. Corridor has gone deathly quiet, but there is that that feeling again, that strange sensation that you've had most of the evening. It's kind of a chill. Something's not right. Yeah. Good stuff. Oh, this is frustrating. <laughs> mm. Well, that too, but good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, whoever you are, leave a man to his sleep. <laughs> Come for ya! That better not be you, Fenton. <laughs> 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 
Um, like, if there's like no response, I'm just gonna close the door and then just again. Sure. Um, yeah. The room. There's a locker. There's a bolt on the door. If you wish to use the bolt, yeah. you can. Shouting. Does it wake us from our sleep, or is it just? Um, I, I, are you actually like... shouting down the corridor? I, mean, I, I, I was shouting when they were hammering on the door. Hmm. Um, then yes, I imagine then you may have heard. If you didn't hear the hammering on the door, you certainly heard somebody calling. You heard Gerard calling out. It's only like the other side of the corridor. Yeah, it's not far away. Yeah. So how do you respond? You just get like a load of expletives from the other side of the corridor and everyone just right. goes back to sleep. <laughs> I light my candle and go to my door and open it and look out into the corridor. And when I hear the other creaking door, <laughs> I see get up. <laughs> <laughs> I say. step out of my room with my torch. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and my crucifix. <laughs> I just shout out and go, is everybody okay? Someone was hammering on my door trying to get into my room. I heard you. Uh, you like called my ago. name, didn't you? Wasn't me. I assumed it was one of you. Wasn't me, so I was sleeping. Yeah. Hmm. We've all had a long enough day without foolish childhood pranks. I don't think any of yeah, us are responsible. Thing. Seems quite aggressive, whatever. whatever. Oh, did, um, which way did the footsteps disappear to, by the way? Did they hear them? Um, yeah, they just walked off along the corridor um, towards, towards like the front uh, of the atrium. building. Yeah. Yeah. Well, whoever it was, they went over that way, the point, yeah, towards the direction the foot were going. Mm. Which was which direction? Towards, it was uh, back the towards your hall. room. Yeah, oh, the me, 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 me. <laughs> um, I'll go. Someone's um, going to have company. <laughs> do you think perhaps... Yeah. Um, Gentlemen, I do is. have I do have like a chaise lounge in here. Does anybody fancy <laughs> sleeping in here with me tonight? <laughs> I mean, it's an unusual request, um, <laughs> but if it means if it means I can sleep without interruption, um, I feel a little bit unnerved being on my own. Would it might be worth it. Try? Yeah, I'm already up. <laughs> uh, please come down and join me, Gerard. Gerard, <laughs> Gerard, whatever you name it, just get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Fair one. I just yeah. don't pop I grab the black. Okay. I grab the duvet, or whatever, and then. Yeah. Yep. Uh, excellent. Um, As he walks into the room, I'll say, maybe, maybe we should keep the candle lit this evening. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, whatever helps you sleep at night. <laughs> Trying to play in character, but not being able to right now. <laughs> <laughs> you. You all manage to get to sleep for the rest of the evening. Oh, thank God for that. Um, and the next day, it, it dawns um, grey. There's kind of Brian that damp asking. feeling in the air. Um, yeah. um, and as you sit and eat breakfast, uh, a heavy rain uh, sets in. <sighs> yeah. And Jack, he... He he's sits there eating breakfast, and he says, "Well, I'm not going to let some inclement weather spoil my sport. I can assure you." <laughs> well, if you're going to be in the water, you're going to be getting wet anyway. So well, precisely, precisely. Um, and Stay close he... to the bank, Jack. Of with course. This, with this torrential rain, let's not have any. Um... <laughs> Don't want you to lose your footing, old boy, and get swept <laughs> no, in the I, stream. I, well, I appreciate the sentiment, old chap. Um, yes, um, don't worry, I'll be perfectly safe. It's not ever so deep. Oh, I, well, I won't be venturing out in this inclement weather. I shall spend yeah. the day in, this, um, in the lounge study stroke library. Um, Would you like some company? Yes. No, Jack. We... <laughs> 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 oh, he wasn't talking to me. <laughs> Played. <laughs> you gotta take me out for dinner first. <laughs> you already slept in a room. I mean, come on. <laughs> um, 
I, 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 yes. I would. Um, who... so, I just, see, I just try to find an excuse because I think is we're not going to do much today because of the weather and whatever, and no actual. Direct. I'm going to spend the day in the so in the like study. The well, you're going to you're happen. going to have a visit from Nugent, aren't you? Oh yeah. So I'm. Uh, oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> So yeah, I'm going to spend the day in this study making some notes, just perusing the books because it's raining, it's horrible. Yeah. There's not a lot to do really. So that's that's yeah. literally what I'm going to be doing today. That's perfect. I mean, Havelock um, already knows about my painting theory, and so Alfred already knows about the uh, <laughs> the murder theory. <laughs> so I'll I'll do I'll run I'll run like bodyguard date duty for today. Um, just Are you going down happened. to the? You're going down yeah, just to keep an eye on him. Yeah. Okay. Um, fishing tricks. Yeah. So he's got his old wet weather gear on and a massive umbrella, um, and he heads off on down to the river. Um, and if you you go with him, um, yeah. yeah, you find yourself sat on the embankment um, of the river as this torrential rain hammers down. Um, what is Havelock and back, uh, 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 Alfred gonna be doing? Well, I'll uh, in the morning, at, uh, like uh, after breakfast, I'll do a few calisthenics and whatnot to uh, mm -hmm. limber up a bit, keep the stiffness out of my my joints and what have you, because it's such a miserable, cold, chilly, wet, awful day. Um, and then I will, uh, go over my, my notes for my little case book and whatnot. Um, yep. take a final look at the, the paintings that, uh, we'd looked at before in the, in the lounge area and yeah. do my best to, uh, prepare myself for, uh, Mr. Nugent's arrival so that I can, uh, ask him the key questions that will hopefully shed some more light on what's going on around here. Cool. Alfred? Havelock. You've got some interesting notes there. I, I've been taking some notes as well. Why don't we put our heads together and maybe we can spot something that we've missed. Oh, I'll, I'll use evidence, worth a try. evidence collection uh, with Havelock um, to try and just uh, go back over um, some of the bits. People maybe, as he's walking through the house, look at the pictures. Yeah. Um... um Try and just piece bits together. <laughs> I'm trying to think if there's anything there that you haven't, any like, information there that you don't have already. Any, uh, any, I any don't think there is. Those. He's he's found more stuff than I have, I think. Right. So, okay. Talk with the locals Maybe go back and all to the library. Stuff. Let's see if there's um, anything so, in the sense. Yeah. That... I, I, let's say um, about 10 o'clock then, um, a, a carriage kind of pulls up outside on the gravel at the front of the house. Um, and a man is greeted by Franklin and then led into the sitting room where you, um, where Alfred, Molly and, and, and Bill are, are waiting. I'm standing um, here casually by the fireplace with a sister of brandy. With a brandy. <laughs> um, absolutely. Casually sipping from it and eyeing the man judiciously. Yeah. And... A, a man, he's wearing um, kind of a, a, a black overcoat and a, and a bowler hat. Mm. Um, he's quite a short fella. Um, Middle-aged guy. He kind of steps in and he takes, uh, Franklin takes his coat from him um, mm -hmm. and leads him into the sitting room and, and announces him as Mr. Nugent. But not his, but not his hat? He takes that as well, of course. Well, I'm just curious. I know what I'm trying to hide under mine, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Nugent exclaims, filthy weather out there. Now, ah, pray yes. tell, just, what is it that uh, just requires my presence out of the here? It's like oh. Randy, old chap. That would be fabulous, yes. Could, could you with war? <laughs> jump for it. Jump, 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 jump. <laughs> yeah. Um, for so Franklin bring the will, yeah. Franklin will bring uh, the brandy. Now, some, what the devil is this all about, eh? Uh, we uh, we just had some questions as to your 
duties and looking after the uh, well, the ancestral manor here of the vast holdings of the uh, <clears throat> Duke's family. Yes. Uh, specifically, could you tell me why the original pictures that hung in the main hall have been replaced with um, shoddy prints, shall we say? Well, dun, dun, dun. I imagine um, the Buckinghams have uh, redistributed the the uh, other collectibles amongst their other properties. Uh, it doesn't seem particularly unusual assess. to me that somebody would do that. What is it? Assess something. Uh, you want to assess honesty? I do. Um, very well. Then you've assessed the hell out of him. Um, Tell me, sir. What are your What are your feelings around this house? How often have you visited the property in the past few years? Um. I'm just going to answer Bill's question first. Okay. He seems genuine. Okay. Um, is I got a zero? My, <laughs> <laughs> my duties, you say, regarding this property, um, well, I merely manage the rental agreements and the how legal often, side of things. How often have you visited? I very. I don't have. Well, I've never had real reason to visit. Oh. Why do you ask? No, just interested to see if you had any uh, feelings about the place. Uh, when you came in there, uh, just walking across the threshold, did you get any sense that the house was as it should be? I'm not entirely sure what it is you're trying to say, um, but some houses, they are just gloomy, and this happens to be a rather gloomy house. Yes. The weather doesn't help, of course. Sir, Not at sir. all. Madam. Um, pleasure to meet you. Um, previous tenants, um, do you know what the names were? The ones that were here about ten years ago? <sighs> but, but perhaps we'd have to look at the estate records. Um, well, they're the, only re they're, they're the only ones that have been here since in the last ten years. Madam... This is not the only property that I deal with. You understand? The problem, sir, is that the um, property records are not here to be found. The property records will probably be found in the office at the back of the building, sir. The office at the back of the building? Yes, madam. Oh. We should have... Mm. <laughs> Well, perhaps we should go and take a look at them. We have through the house with a fine-tooth comb, so... <laughs> we're not very good investigators, are we? Yeah, uh, yeah we're bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, shall we? Well, by perhaps all means... Perhaps the answers you seek are in, uh, the in, in those records. <laughs> Obviously, he knows more about the hell going on here than we do. <laughs> Excellent. Um, I'm going to cut over to... Uh, we're going to cut over to Gerard. Just for a little while. Um, yeah, the rain is is beating down. Um, it's quite a pleasure. You're muted, by the way, uh, Lloyd. Uh, I don't have any fishing skill. Can I still do fishing? Uh, you you don't yeah, you have to. Cash you, could, you could just sit on the the embankment if you if you so <laughs> well, desire. It's fly fishing. He <laughs> wouldn't even be accused of drowning a worm. He could just toss it out there. Just imagine it's like oh, you're, one, you're wading into like fish. the stream and using scuffling to pull fish out of the water. <laughs> <laughs> that would that be like I thought my basket. That would be like uh, salmon tickling or something, the right? The river. Yeah. <laughs> now I just keep him company while he's doing his thing. Yeah, and he seems to be having a fine old time. Um, uh, casting the old reel into the um, into the river, um, and he, you, know, you watch. Maybe even get a little bit excited as he kind of starts reeling in a couple of these uh, fine-looking trout, um, and he kind of looks back with a, "You see, I told you, old boy, this this river is like a gold mine." <laughs> this is um, very unusual. <laughs> <laughs> well, but so long as you're enjoying yourself. Well, certainly am. Well, would you like to have a go? I can give it a shot. I 
not that practiced with it, but I don't know if it if this entire river is laden with fish, I'm sure I'll catch something. Hmm. Um, and he kind of hands you uh, the fishing rod and it gives you a quick rundown of what you need to do. Yeah. And it's about that time you notice something out of the corner of your eye. Um, Is it a dark the shape again? towards the trees? Yeah. Your eyes are drawn to it. You see yeah. uh, like a dark figure in the bushes again, like somebody's watching you. So who goes there? Like a shout, like show yourself. And there's, there's nothing. It doesn't move. It just seems to be standing there in the bushes. Partially concealed by the foliage. So you there's definitely him. a figure there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure. You don't make him roll. Uh... <laughs> but, I mean, it doesn't look... It's just, it's just someone standing in the bushes. I mean... Yeah, at the moment. Yeah. Um, I'll call, I'll call it Jack, do you, do you see that? Yes. I've got to take my eyes off it. God, uh, yeah, but cast a line at him. The blighter. <laughs> All right, we give it a shot. Can I catch a ghost? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you going to call? Yeah, I don't know. Ghost. You make I, would, I, I would love it if he did. He just like <laughs> roll the six <laughs> on the dice. Uh, well, you kind of cast this line out. Yeah. Um, and the hook and line stretch out from the reel um, across towards the trees. And it's a dead shot. Yeah, um, and the hook swings down straight through the figure. <gasps> it passes right through it, and then oh, the figure just <laughs> vanishes. Please make a stability roll, old boy. Fenton, mm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> you bastard! <laughs> uh, stability. Uh, I'll put. Uh, let's put two points on it. Okay. That means you will lose two points regardless, yeah? Uh, does it? All right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't seem to work, and I uh, will... You click the... Uh, the... Yeah, I put the... You click the symbol. The oh, yeah. okay. Uh, actually, I'll put one, and then I'll roll it, and then add a one if it doesn't do it in the, the dice roller. Okay. Am I going to have to add the dice roller in? Cause... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, 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 do, I'll, I'll do it by hand. See, I, th- um, I got a zero last time. That's what I was referring to. Okay. Oh well. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, so... shake, shake my fist at him. You're like fetid. Yeah. <laughs> Get out of the bushes, you clown. Yeah, that's that's bizarre. This thing just disappears in front of you. Maybe, yeah. maybe somebody has run off up the path. You maybe better run. Somehow you got away. Coward. That's strange. Yeah. Hmm. Um. Meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, he says, um, you're in the back office um, of the... Which we never uh, knew existed. Yeah, of, of the house. Um, near the housekeeper's room. Um, and um, it's quite dusty in there. It's not been used in a while. Um, I but will, Nugent, well, what did my he, handkerchief he, send? Put it over can, my mouth. Yes, why not? Um, Nugent, he kind of brings out the estate records, um, and start. You start going through. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, Is this library use or? Um, oh. it, Yes, I think it is. I just need to find the bit that I'm looking for. Um, Bureaucracy? Evidence? No, I, I, think, I think it's going to be... Library use is, is, is definitely appropriate. I'm just looking for the bit of information I need to give you. Not that. Of course, you never find it when you're looking... Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-
Oh, bugger, 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 bugger. I want to show that. What was it? You put third day, the downpour. Oh, no, no, close that down. That was, that was accidental. Oh, we'll that. that. Oh, read it. <laughs> yeah. This should be easier, but I can't fucking find the bit I'm gonna need to know. I need to find uh, anyway. Yes. Um, you, you kind of go through these records, um, and the, the, the name that kind of jumps out at you is indeed a tenant that had the house, uh, had rented the house for a few months, eight months I think it was, uh, in 1896. Um, and it was a man by the, by the name of Francis Adams who rented the property and stayed there with his wife. Um, but he did end the tenancy early mm. and left, he left quite hurriedly um, and didn't even reclaim the deposit. Um, and Nugent is kind of, ah, yes, I remember him now, yes. What can you tell us about him? Well, I believe he's an artist. Um, him and his wife, they'd spent some time, they spent some time in the con on the continent. Um, they'd rented the property for a short while. There was, uh, they I believe the wife left uh, before the gentleman did. She was unwell. She was unwell and went to. Um, well, I couldn't. That I couldn't tell you, old chap. But um, yeah, she left early. She was unwell. She went to, off to spend a little bit of time on the continent um, for uh, you know medical reasons. She was ill. Apparently so. So, it's quite common well, for British ladies to go over to the continent. But of course it is, yes. Um, and Mr. Mr. Adams, he, yes, he ended the tenancy earlier than anticipated. To join uh, his wife, obviously. He uh, set off to join his wife, of course. Um, but uh, he didn't even bother to claim the deposit for the house. He just upped and left. And did you ever hear from him again? Did he have a forwarding address? No, none, none that he was uh, inclined to give to me. Are or you, his wife either. Are you a forwarding aware address? of address? Pardon, sir? Well, did his wife leave a forwarding address? Same. No. The tenancy was taken out in the gentleman's name, sir. Are you aware no of reason. any... Oh, I was thinking point? more of parcels being forwarded and so forth any damage being done to the kiln as a uh, part of the property there's significant damage to it i'd have thought that perhaps your factoring of the services might have well but been aware of that it's been in a state of disrepair for some time it hasn't been used in many a year so yes yes many... yes i understand that but the damage the significant damage to it there's when did that happen? And it's there's too there's too much. It's not just wearing away. It looks it looks like it's been. I assure you, it is merely erosion, sir. Hmm. You you said that when uh, Gerard inspected it earlier, right? Yes. That it was obviously erosion. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No, oh, too bad because I thought I had a story. Well, still might. sorry to disappoint you, sir. Hmm. Still, would that be all you'll be requiring of me? I must get back I, to the I, office. Uh, so, well, I'm not an accountant, so um, I don't know if this is uh, anything, anything else. Um, I don't know if my thing with law would help uh, as far as... Uh, 
Yes, what the ghostly voice said. <laughs> He's answered that already. That they got distributed. I know he, I, I know he did. Yeah. I know he did. Yeah. And he he said he thought the the, yeah. the Duke the, and his family. Games, yeah. Just, yeah, they just yeah. you know so took them and replaced them with shoddy stuff where they don't bother to live and took the nice ones elsewhere. Yeah. And obviously they didn't want the other ones because they were done by uh, Mr. Francis Avery. <laughs> Adams. What's that? Adams. <laughs> Francis Adams. <Yeah. laughs> What's that noise? Will there be anything further? I really must I get to... back to the office. No, no. Damn it, I want to be... I so want to be able to go, yes, you're under arrest, but I have no idea I mean, to do it. Yeah, for, for, for. Uh, You've got a yeah. gun. I know I have a gun. No, I feel that everything is in order here. Thank you for your time. Hmm. Well, thank you, madam. Um, if you require anything further, please do not hesitate to contact my office. He hands you a business card. Much appreciated. Uh, um, and then returns to the carriage, which is... He wanders off, though, and he, as he's gone, I'll do um, a, a search of this office and see if there's anything else mm. within the office. Any any private papers, journals, or anything that might sort of, like, give a hint into what happened, who might have... Mm. You know what I mean? Anything that's personal that might link us to... Uh, Francis um, Adams or etc etc so I'm going to do a live use and I'm going to spend a point no you're not <laughs> <laughs> um, ah, told nah. you there's, yeah uh, there's nothing for you to spend a point on there okay. um, um, the searching through uh, it, it is basically just a, a dusty old office um, um, with nothing much more than the estate records in there Um and uh, as Nugent goes to leave um, and you kind of watch his carriage pull away you're aware Molly as you look through the window of a figure walking up the path and the rain is coming down it's absolutely hammering it down at the moment um, and so as you kind of think, you you know, it, you know, it looks a little bit like Jack as he's kind of making his way up, up, up the path. Um, I wave. Yeah. Uh, so you, it it doesn't appear to notice you. Um, I but, wipe the window and stare. Yeah. And as this figure approaches, you suddenly realise that. That's not Jack. But it's a strangely familiar face. It's the man from the watercolor. The Freaky. stick watercolor. Um, I'm on my own again still. I don't know. Where's Alfred? I was in the, the You were in the office. Oh, okay. So, yes, you're on your own. <laughs> I just grab his arm and yank him over to the window. Unless, uh, where's Bill? Is Bill? Did Bill stay in the office there as well, or was he? I just, I just grab whoever stood next to me, Alfred, and just drag him and go. Look at that, and drag him to the window. Yeah, it's just a ghost. <laughs> it. Who is it that's there? Because I, I think Alfred is in the office. Is Bill there, or is Molly alone? No, I'm not you're, alone. You're muted, no, no. You're muted Bill. Sorry. That's uh, quite all right. I was typing and I didn't want to annoy you. No, that's Croy. fine. No, absolutely no. fine. No worries. Um, the, Now, she left the office, didn't she? She's left the office, yeah. Um, yeah, okay. I, I was she, still... She probably didn't realize she had, but I've made her leave the office. Oh, what, right. what, you made me leave the office, did you? <laughs> <laughs> well, all the time she just... You know, lifted off the ground. Okay, so where... The okay, then. You're in the... So you're in the basically, you've walked out with that Nugent guy. The whereabouts am He's I? Climbed, you're in the sitting room at the front of okay. the house. I'm, I'm, um, I'm on Watching as the, as the Kate, the coach leaves. What make me be on my own? Because it's funny. Yeah, because it's 
<laughs> fucking funny. <laughs> um, yeah. I thought There's you loved the scary stuff. That you recognize. <laughs> then... So I kind of like cleared the window and I knocked and... Yes. And then I realized it's him and then I... Yeah. And what do you do? The figure is approaching the glass and it it gazes what? through. What? My... Shit. Looking straight at you. Um, it has a smile on his face. Oh, that's even creepier. <laughs> but it's, it's not a nice smile. I see you. There's something evil, malevolent about this smile. And although the rain is pouring down, he appears to be completely dry. I just go. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> do you scream? I do. Okay. Oh, I um, scream. <laughs> yeah, and the figure moves away from the window. I stumble towards, backwards and towards it's... the front door. Towards the front door. Yeah. He's just like Jesus. I was just trying to hear the scream. Yeah, you hear the scream. Oh God, you hear the scream. <laughs> Crying out loud. Yeah. So I scream and I stumble back and then try and yeah. watch to see where if he, then try to see where he's gone. Okay. Um and there's a, a loud ring from the front doorbell. Oh shit <laughs> Okay, I ga- I gather my composure and I run to the door and yank it open really quick. Um and as you do that then um, the rain kind of blows into your face with the uh the, this heavy rain and the, and the wind that blows through. We've run through at this point. Yeah, you you certainly are. And you can see Molly rush to the front door and fling it open. There's nobody there. I faint. <laughs> no, only if you make it. Do you want to make a stability roll? And we'll find out what happens. Yeah. You, can, you can lose some stability and then faint. Oh. No. Okay. Yeah, join the you, club. Yeah. <laughs> Um, boo! Boo! <laughs> boo! Yeah, I you're st- uh, so you're still kind of unsure as to what's going on. Whether you've actually seen what you have just seen, uh, you were aware of Alfred and Bill um, coming out of the sitting room into the hallway or looking through to the where office. you are standing. We were in the office. Yeah, but you heard the, the scream. The you, unless you didn't, but Alfred certainly did run through. And that was right, wasn't it? Yep. Yep. Well, um, no, I thought we were both back in the office. We heard her scream. I just turned around to who Ebb behind me and yeah. going, okay, I take it all back, right. And, uh, you're standing there at the door and you hear footsteps behind you. I am um, yanking I turn around. Who is it behind me? And, and Franklin stands there and he says... Mr. Jack's room uh, bell rang again. There was a man. There was a man at the window, and he was he was looking at me through the window. He was right close to me. The window. He walked to the door. The doorbell rang. He's not here. You suddenly feel like you're being pushed aside, like a strong gust of wind has suddenly come through. Oh no! I've got all goose pimply now. Um, <laughs> um, and <gasps> Alfred, are you there at the this? door as well at this point? Yep, I'm behind. Uh, Bill, are you at the door at this point? Yeah. You all feel this this sense, strange sensation, almost like a gust of wind has blown past you. Well, I, I um, have my almost picked out, right? Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe you did. Um, well, I said I did. Please make stability rolls, folks. Yay! Oh, bugger. I'm going to pass it, and I'm, I'm, but pass, no, I'm no, not no, passing no. it right now. Oh! Oh, oh for crying out loud! <laughs> um, is yours working, um, Alfred? Yep, yeah. Uh, okay, as long as it's working. On. <laughs> Sorry about that. I faint this time. Well, let's put it this Thank way: you, you are not okay. Sorry, Mark, what would you say? You are not okay. Okay, I'm not okay. Uh, you all lose four points of stability. Four points. Wow. Yeah. Which one do we take it off? Rating or, or uh, pool. stability? Pool. Pool. You're right, take it off pool, yeah. 
Um... And then you, you, there's this whiff of roasting meat from the tour that you can smell. I know. I um, know it. Yeah. Uh, I know it. Something not right. You're kind it. of thinking it's coming from the kitchen. No, I Sorry. know what it is. <laughs> So, what do we have in the kitchen? Sorry. You, you, well, you, there's a smell of roasting meat that you think probably is coming from the kitchen. Sorry, Alfred, carry on. Have a look. What's wrong? You've cut... You smell that? I don't feel very good, but yes, I, I haven't lost the sense of smell. I'm going to come back to the house and everyone's going to be nuts, aren't they? Well, pull yourself together, <laughs> sir. <laughs> yeah. I think we should maybe cut back and see what what um, Gerard's doing back at the at the river there with Jack. Uh, you this thing, uh, you, it's disappeared. <laughs> it's catching daffodils. <laughs> Something <laughs> is not right. Yeah. Um, and and Jack and he's looking at you and his eyes are, are wise. I think we should go back. Oh, did you see that? I did. Uh, that's not. I think it's whatever this is is escalating. I think we should get back to the house to find the others. Just give me a moment to pack these things up. Yes, uh, I, uh, quick as you can. I'll give him a hand as well. Yeah, um, and then moments later, you're you're hurrying through the uh, the rain back yeah. towards the house. Um, and I think about that time <laughs> is probably when you notice. You notice the smoke coming from the brick kiln. <gasps> that's peculiar. Maybe those workmen have, for some reason, decided to work during the rain, but this makes no sense. Uh, wait, uh, <laughs> what, what? What? Look, the kiln, the kiln is lit. Good lord, so it is. Let's switch it in. Let's get out of this rain. Yeah, <laughs> and and you hurry back towards the, the house. Yeah, and and then you, as you're approaching the house, you then smell the the roast burning meat. meat. Yeah. Mm. Um, meat back on the menu, boys. Yeah. <laughs> Make a sense trouble roll, somebody. God damn it! In fact, uh, all of you. <laughs> just because. <laughs> yeah, okay. Everybody. Um, <laughs> really? How many? How many? Yeah, that's how not many bad, is it? How many did we want to roll there? At least um, that was like the threshold, isn't it? Probably. <laughs> the Never smell bad. of the roasting meat is not coming from the kitchen. It's actually coming through the front door for uh, Alfred, Molly, and Bill. Uh, something carried in on the wind. Um, and perhaps at, at that point, you too maybe notice the smoke, white smoke rising from the brick kiln. I, I, at this point, I turn around and say, okay, seriously, I admit there is something seriously wrong in the house. There was a man staring at me through the window. He stood and stared. He was this close to me by the window. It was the most discombobulating thing I've ever seen. He was very close to me. And then he walked to the door and the doorbell rang. And then I opened the door and then something pushed me away at the door. We, and then, we know. We were. We were. Felt we felt it. Too. And, then, and then now. And, and now. Look. And we see it. I told you, Molly. Okay. I told you that is something. Alfred, I admit <laughs> now that maybe I maybe I was a bit brash with my judgment, but we need. Thank you. <laughs> this is what we've been waiting for. This is the story. I love it. Could I tap on the window of a man named Alfred, <laughs> who was really a, keen on solving mysteries? Some Mr. gray figures are making their way up the path towards the house. <laughs> <laughs> What's, what, what's coming up towards the house, sorry? Some figures are moving up the path from the river towards the house. 
From the river? I take it that's Jake yeah. and Gerald. <laughs> oh, 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 all right. From Manta, I was like, wait a minute, who the hell else we all oh, Yeah, it's them. Yeah, Jack and Gerard. <laughs> and that was the... one of those <gasps> moments. Yeah, the, the rain is easing slightly. Um, the smell of, of, of cooking is still very strong. The smoke billowing from the top of the the kiln. Go have a look. Of course, we're going. <laughs> Make your stability proud. I get my. I get. I get. Is there umbrellas? There's umbrellas. There's yeah, umbrellas. you can get an umbrella if you wish. I grab oh, an I umbrella. Yeah. A raincoat umbrella. Um, yeah. I grab another umbrella. Do we recognise who's coming up the road yet? At this point. Uh, yes, you would identify when the rain kind of eased off slightly. You could identify they were carrying fishing gear. It appears to be Gerard and Jack uh, making their way back up the river. Yeah. Um, and yet, yeah, Gerard, you see your companions standing, looking perplexed at the open door of the manor, looking out um, as you approach. Yeah, I grab the I grab the umbrella and I run out to to the two yeah. of them with an umbrella over them. Good um, lord, do you see the kiln appears to be appears to be on fire. I know. Let's go and find out what's going on. Yeah, it's, someone's doing something over there. We need to put a stop to it. Put a stop I, to it. I turn upstairs to my room yeah. and uh, pull out my uh, my investigator's kit from the okay. uh, drawer of the nightstand. I also uh, take my Webley from out from under my pillow and put it in its holster under my left arm. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> grab myself a uh, a raincoat or a slicker and uh, an umbrella yours. from the hall and uh, head out in pursuit of my friends on their way to the kiln. Excellent. What's Molly doing? Apart from having maybe a little meltdown. Reconsidering her life choice. <laughs> <laughs> so, Alfred ran out the door to greet the other two. Yeah. Bill ran upstairs to get himself packed up to go and set the... Well, yeah. What did Gerald do? He's out there. Gerard is out there. It, it, it was... Um, yeah. Alfred ran out to Gerard. So I'm on my own it. right now, again. Yes, in the hallway. No, Franklin said. I grab, go to the walk closet and grab a coat from the closet and a pair I'll, of wellies. I'll yep. wait for her. Okay. You're already upstairs. I, mean, I did the, well, I did that while no, you were. Yeah, she <laughs> might. Yeah. My stuff, but I came back down. If you're standing there wondering yeah, what she, to do, I, I will she wait would for you. She probably, she would probably be, she would probably beat you to that. But, yeah. I, um, I, well, yeah, yeah. I put my wellies and I grab from the closet. I open the the hall closet. There's bound to be one, isn't there? And I yeah. so grab, grab any three... coats and wellies that I can find and and say. Oh, we, we, we really need Franklin we need to find Mrs Franklin and make sure she's safe do not leave her alone we're just going to go and check what's happening at the kiln oh well I'm alright madam I'm sure I'm sure there's nothing untoward he must probably use vandals or something Franklin just do not leave Mrs Franklin alone oh, certainly madam go to see to her now uh, um, <laughs> as you wish um, to her. Alfred and Gerard you're standing out there looking with Jack towards the brick kiln um, you can see Molly frantically grabbing some stuff in the doorway. She apparently is intending to head out too. Yeah. Um, Bill has disappeared just... momentarily. <laughs> Should we just make a start? Yes, let's go. Before whatever it is is burnt up. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you run um, up the hill uh, along the road. Um, I, I'm going to say for brevity that all of you are together by this point um, uh, you climb the, the, over the fence and find yourself in the meadow the brick kiln uh, standing in front of you um, once again looking sinister and black um, as you approach you can you notice like an eerie red glow from inside as if a fire has been lit um, and the smoke billowing upward and the smell of roasted meat getting stronger as you approach it well, the um, meat smells coming from there yeah um, and then as Sunday you get Mrs. Ad, like Mrs. Adams used to make <laughs> and da, 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 da. you get within perhaps 50 yards or so uh, of the, the thing and you kind of notice the smoke kind of diminishing the glow from within 
subsiding oh. and and that smell of roasted meat fading until by the time you actually reach the kiln there's just like this faint just trace of smoke just drifting away from the top like a wisp sorry no, it's just, it was cool. Strobin on the stream yeah it was really cool oh, right. there it is Um, I'm not going in there. We cleared a path to the brambles before. Yeah, so let's go. Through the brambles. Mm. Let's see what's in. It probably, I bet we're going to find nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that, but no, you're right. <laughs> um, <laughs> you push, you push on in, uh, into the inside interior of the the kiln, um, and it it really does look pretty much exactly as you'd left it. Um, obviously some rain has kind of falling in through the uh, through the, 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 the roof and through the, the hole in the, the side uh, dampening the ground um, and making everything a little bit mustier um, but yeah it's, it, it's pretty much exactly as you left it, there's no sign of what may have caused the the glowing or the smoke whatsoever, the smell of meat is Vanished. So I stood outside. I didn't go in. And as they went mm. in, right? As, as I'm stood outside, I can see the red glow. No. As you as you all rushed up towards it, it's faded. It's gone. Faded, and it's disappeared. And like the smoke, like, like it was it a big plume happened. of. Yeah. When you reached it, there was just this faint trace of white smoke. I <laughs> I, I I don't go in, but I go up to the entrance and, and I touch this wall to see if they feel warm. Uh, no, they just feel wet and slick with rain. Damp. I glance back towards the house. House is still there, exactly as you left it. Front door open. What, what can't was see that the noise? Is that one of us making that noise? Yes, one of us. Yeah. <laughs> it's not. You idiots, a... pack it in, <laughs> knobbers. <laughs> You made me swear on stream. Good lord, that was... What the devil happened? What? Who knows? Someone's playing tricks on us. Kid. Um. Well, there's obviously nothing here. It was... Uh... It's, it's rain. raining, it's cold, it's wet. It's, 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 let's go back. Back to the house. My goodness, how terribly disappointing. Well, uh, sorry, your morbid curiosity is um, <laughs> being disappointed one more time. I'm sure perhaps tomorrow, <laughs> by tomorrow evening, <laughs> we'll have something a bit more look. concrete for you to write about. <laughs> I turn around and start heading back. Yeah, you trudge wearily back, back. Um, the adrenaline kind of wearing off. Uh, you make your way back towards the house. The the front door is still open, um, and you shoulder your way in. Something bizarre, something weird has has, has happened here. No, and you can't. You can't. <laughs> no, you just feel uneasy. That the whole. The whole incident, you know, the yeah, the figure at the window. You the, think I'm down, freaking five points of stability? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> 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 I feel perfectly Can't fine. You take that home with me. I'll scuff yeah. you into the middle of next week. Um, Throw a third, old man. <laughs> <laughs> Will you come Lock on, you fossil? <laughs> um. Uh, as, as you kind of you you, it's all right. We're take the best your of raincoats <laughs> off. Yeah, you <laughs> shake off your umbrellas, um, and eat him. What are you talking Miss, about? Mrs. Franklin <laughs> emerges from the kitchen, um, and she looks at you. Oh dear, she says, "You look like you've had a bit of a fright, my dears." <sighs> Fish pie this evening, she says. <laughs> Thought you, I'll gentlefolk, might prefer. 
something different to trout today. That'll do nicely. Thank you very much. Is there some, I... some foolery afoot of the, the kiln? Hmm. Dear. I go into the study and pour myself a drink from the. Um, You're gonna have to pry it out of my hands first. Yeah, I think. <laughs> yeah. She, she, gets, she gets out a tumbler. I'll just trace, I'll some... just trace it right over here. You go. Uh, she glug, 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 she, glug, she glug, empties glug. the flowers out of the vase and yeah. fills the vase. I was gonna say she just she goes there, pours like nice. the it's tumbler. Candles. Yeah, yeah. A tumbler. Pours, pours a tumbler of brandy, puts the tumbler down on the table, and just walks away with the bottle. Yeah, here you go. Here you idea. There's a glass for you. Yeah. <laughs> mm. um, as I get my brandy, I actually go back to the window and look back out at the window. Okay. Um, and <laughs> booga, booga, booga. Yeah, the rain has eased off. There's there's not much to that you can see. Um, it just looks like a perfectly normal day. Grey, rainy, but yeah, it's just normal. There's you can. You know, there's nothing disturbing about the scene. Is, is it too late to put uh, chronic alcoholism as your pillar of stability? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my name is Bill. <laughs> I feel better already. <laughs> I never like being a policeman anyway. Screw that crap. So, uh, oh. the afternoon passes. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you sit quietly <laughs> in the sitting yeah. room, contemplating the events of the morning. Oh sure. Um, I have a sudden urge to tear down all those paintings and smash that kiln into powder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I'd be slightly unnerved by all the that all the it's paintings. I, uh, that was mm. that was exactly my thought. Exactly. Great minds think alike. So Have any explosives around here? <laughs> okay. I've got a, I've got a friend <laughs> in, in EOD. <laughs> so you have... You want to break these paintings? Is that what you're saying you want to do? Or are you going... Or is that just a... I want to, but it's like, I don't know if that's like at the right time. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, also, I wonder if they belong to the Dukes of Buckingham. <laughs> Why? Um, he didn't paint them. Uh, no, but he owns them. We could just do a Nugent and like replace him with cheaper versions. Like They probably wouldn't that's even notice. A, they haven't painted it for like point. 20 years. They, haven't, they don't care. You know, that, that's, I've been kicking myself uh, since earlier this evening there. We had Ted Nugent in the house, and I didn't get his autograph. Yeah, we could just say Molly stole it. Hold on just a minute. Who wants Ted Nugent's autograph? He's cray-cray. Um... Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, never mind. I I I turn and say, just remove those pictures and turn them towards the floor for now. I'm I figure, throw them uh, down yeah. to do the tap dance on them, but yeah. right now they may play a key role. In... It doesn't mean we have to look at them. Let's just take them down. I'm yeah. so I'm unnerved after today and that kiln and the smoke and well with any luck the workmen will arrive tomorrow and then we can uh, that's the plan the kiln out and then I don't think I maybe think we can I, do I, a ceremonial burning of these paintings <laughs> in the brick kiln we just have to make it through to tomorrow maybe, I think yeah. we should all at least double up in our rooms for safety yeah Okay, well, that sounds, you know, By that the sounds end of the like night, you we'll have all a be plan. Trying, we'll all be taking shifts on the divan in Angie's room. <laughs> I think <laughs> all, all four of us huddled in there. I think all three of us. She, she'll be on the double bed, and we'll all be three on the three <laughs> yeah, on yeah. The yeah. Yeah. seat all crammed together. <laughs> Stop stealing all the covers. There must be a better You won't be way. in bed with me. It's the 1900s. Is you're getting in bed with me. <laughs> we not talk about that. <laughs> You're in the bed, and the rest of us are in the love seat. That's what we he was yeah, saying. All, all together, sharing the divan. <laughs> so yeah. no, one, no one has to sleep alone. Yeah. So we the, go through the, the evening. evening. It's subdued. Um, you have your dinner. Um, once again, it, it is excellent. Sprinkled liberally with brandy. Well, it, it, there's, there may be some alcohol involved. Um, <laughs> no question yeah. about that. I don't have to roll in my... 
uh, investigative skills to answer that one. <laughs> and and there's. There is, I mean, nothing helps. If someone doesn't answer that phone, untoward. I'm really going to get upset. Nothing untoward happens um, for the rest of that evening. You you have your your dinner. You even perhaps take cigars and port in the sitting room that evening. But I don't know. Maybe is conversation subdued? Is it... it I kind of imagine it would be. I'm, but. He's subdued, I mean, but I, I'm trying to rationalise what I saw and trying to. Mm. I think it seems like a reasonable thing. My, yeah. my concern is that it's clearly escalating. It You're is. Right. So, like, yeah. what it like if it, at the rate it's kind of been going over the last couple of days, that we're not going to know. Tomorrow is going to know. It's going to basically like tomorrow is going to be like do or die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whereas right. I'm kind of trying to re-rationalise what. I saw kind of like I'm now trying to go well maybe I didn't see it and maybe it was just the wind and the gale and maybe I maybe I was mistaken and I'm, I'm and, and I'm trying I, to I'm almost not even, I'm not even listening to her <laughs> we all saw it yeah <laughs> but you didn't see the me. face you didn't see the face though that you only saw you felt the breeze I'm just we trying saw, to rationalise it the shape of it at least that is yeah and then I would just sort of say I think tomorrow we should um, burn the pictures and leave this place. That's my plan. So let's go to bed. Yeah, and well, so what, what's the what, what's the plan? What what, is, what are people doing? Are you I think we going to separate people, rooms? At, at least two people to a room. Yeah. Like at least. <laughs> I think it's going to be one stressful evening, even if nothing does happen. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll just, as I go up, I, um, I'll go, um, uh, 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 Gerald, would you, would you mind accompanying me again? This Certainly. Evening? <laughs> yeah. So you two will be in that front bedroom. <laughs> where will Alfred, where will Bill be? I'll grab the, I'll grab whatever looks comfy. From my from my room, and uh, and I'm yeah. gonna say, have a look, little bean. Uh, I fancy sleeping in front of the fire tonight, and just sleeping in downstairs, perhaps. Um, in front of the fire, get some port. Perhaps we can share some stories. <clears throat> That's What's a pretty good you? idea. <laughs> I'll get I'll get my robe. <laughs> yeah, Damn I'll it. kind of grab some. <clears throat> Whatever bed clothes mm. or whatever's available. Yeah, but I'm I'm taking my I'm taking my firearm and I'm taking my investigator kit. I'm just I'm moving down to the study basically. Yeah, you never know when you may have to fingerprint a ghost. Hmm. Hmm. And and so you you settle down for the evening. Um, it's probably. It's probably after midnight um, when you are suddenly awoken. Who is? Everyone. Okay. As all of the bells in the house all go off at the same time. This cacoph cacophony of bells just ringing throughout the house, waking everybody up. I get up. Shit. This ghost is I, testing my patience. <laughs> and I walk calmly over to the bell that's here in the study. I grab it. Is that you, Molly? <laughs> What's happened? I just heard someone scream. It sounded you like did a hear scream. scream. Have yes. uh, If it's not Molly, I fear the worst for Mrs. Franklin. Mrs. Franklin. I. Da uh, I, I, that's, I, I that's up. Shit. Their room is upstairs, right? Yeah. Uh, at the, yeah, the far end of the corridor. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to dash um, up. Yeah. You run as quickly as you Mr. can Franklin. up the stairs. Uh, yeah. No. Um, Just shouting. Um, it, I mean, it seemed to, it seemed to uh, Molly and Gerard that it was coming from the landing. Yeah. Um, to uh, Will and 
Alfred, it sounded like it was just coming from upstairs in one of the bedrooms. Um, perhaps nearer the back of the house. Um, you make your way quickly house. up the stairs. Is is yes. that the, the back of the house? Is... Now, is that is that where the master bedroom is? No, the master okay. bedroom is at, is at the front of the house. But it's what it, oh okay. You've got a, a, a row of of bedrooms that you were using. They are. Yeah, the, the um, reason, no, the reason I asked run... is because obviously, I, I in almost certainty they weren't out at the kiln when this all started. He uh, he probably did something here in the house and. If they were the only ones here, they were probably in the master bedroom. Oh, you yeah, right. So you're, you're no, right, no. Uh, okay. okay. That's right. what. That's what the thought process is behind it. But mm. we're we're going to wherever we thought we heard the scream from. Okay. Um. So you you find yourselves kind of up on the landing. Um. The sound appearing to have come down the corridor, the one that has all of the bedrooms down one side. Down towards yeah. the Franklin. Down towards the back Franklin. of the house. Yeah. Um. And you can hear there is a shuffling in the the first bedroom along that corridor. You hear a foot. You hear footsteps, muffled footsteps in that room. Wait, the one I used to be in? I, I guess it could be. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Shit. <laughs> Dodged Good him thing you moved, huh? <laughs> Coming from in there. Do we open yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, I'm. Charging down there, I yeah, got my torch, in my, yeah. my gun. That's an instant of any use. Oh, okay, so who, where, who's here at the minute? Because they were downstairs, we're upstairs. Are we all together I'm assuming now? that you, you came out of your room and walked down the corridor, yeah. and that those they've come running up the stairs to the top of the okay. landing, and so you're right. all roughly together. Okay, yeah. so we open, so we get, we're near that door. Yeah. yeah, I'll shoulder the door open and stick my flashlight okay. out there, and what's going and on? And the see? door, it swings open. Um, and and inside, Bill, you feel you catch a glimpse. Um, a figure dressed in grey. Um, his face twisted in a, a, an expression of murderous rage. Um, a large knife in its hand. Um, and as the door swings open, you see this thing. You notice also... Uh, a hunch, a figure laying upon the bed, um, and then they both vanish. Okay, well, that's exactly what I was thinking before. Why I asked if it was coming from the master bedroom area. This yeah. was. Mm. This is where it took you, place. Bill, what did you see? <laughs> yeah, see, are you tired? None of you <laughs> saw that. <laughs> They, they probably did Yeah, you were the first one into the room. You uh, saw that. Ah, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Boom. Oh, oh, that's all water. We're all <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Do you go into the room? Yeah. I think we found the murder room. <laughs> right. So you go into the room. Yeah. Um, and you catch the glimpse from the bedroom window. There's a glowing... Is it the damn the, kiln? It's in the direction of the kiln. Son of a... Smoke once again, billowing from the top. But something else. If anybody was to inspect more closely, that is. I was go to the kiln. We'll just go, go to the window. <laughs> Yeah, I'll I out the window. I'll, I'll, I'll do it, because I got the ability to spare. <laughs> a figure walking up towards the kiln. Towards the kiln, yeah. He seems to be carrying, carrying something, something over his shoulder up towards the kiln. Yeah. Oh, he's going to cook the some kiln potatoes. Glowing in the darkness. This faintly luminous plume of smoke that's kind of rising up out of the chimney. Please make stability rolls, anybody that sees that. Did we go in? Did I go in? Yeah, I'm not going to be out on the landing on my own, am I? Ah, oh, yeah. I'm fine. Yes! <laughs> it's all this, I told you so, I told you so, I told you so. Now that it's panning out, I'm like, damn right. 
<laughs> I knew what I was telling you people to listen to me. Boom. Alfred, you lose four points of stability, my friend. Jeez. Uh, oh, crap. What are you, you sure on? this isn't it's Cthulhu? Negative. <laughs> Possibly at this point. I don't know if it, I don't know what he started on to be honest. I think he was quite high, so I think we're Yeah, okay. yeah, I, I think uh, you're still in the positive, aren't you? Four four points. <laughs> Yeah, we're all right. Oh wow! No, so no, yeah, no, you no, are no, well, you stop, are not stop, okay. Stop! 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 Stop, are... stop! 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 Did I lose four points? You did. Yes. I'm on minus one. Oh! oh. <laughs> so not only are you not okay, you are not okay. <laughs> um, He's really not okay. Yeah, uh, it's yeah. You your mind is struggling to process exactly what is going on here. Um, maybe you. You almost go into a fugue state for perhaps a moment, unaware quite where you are or what's happening. Um, I mean, you step out of that, or you snap out of that soon enough, um, but you're not quite sure now what it is you've seen, or if even if you remember what you've just seen. Um, you just know that you're standing in this room with this group of people. Um, you, you know them, they're your friends um, and you're all looking out of a window <laughs> but you are you are not feeling well I say I, I, I think I need to sit down and get a cup of tea Where, where's where's the staff uh, Alfred what it, are you on I about this is what you wanted to Alfred this is what you wanted to see there's uh, a man out there and he's carrying over. it uh, grab the bell and they start yeah. ringing the bell. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah. yeah, and it, don't, it, it don't kind of rings out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Don't worry, we'll be leaving tomorrow and you can go home to your wife. <laughs> yes. um, and this bell rings out. And, and Alfred, this was, the, Frank, the Franklins are asleep. <laughs> <laughs> it, it doesn't take long before one of the... Oh, uh, Franklin arrives uh, at the doorway and... Um, uh, uh, you're you're wrong, you're wrong, sir. I'm sorry, Franklin. It's uh, fine. Go back to bed. What's going on? What, uh, uh, is everything all right, sir? I'd like a, a bit cup of... of tea, please. Uh, certainly, sir. I, I, I'll, I'll see Franklin, you. Franklin, do not worry yourself. You go back to bed. There's a bit of a disturbance, and we're a bit upset, but I'm, I'm sure we can get him a, a drink from downstairs ourselves. Do not disturb yourself. Good Lord, he says as he catches the glow from out of the window. Does Mr. Franklin have to roll stability? <laughs> he's an NPC. He doesn't have to do shit. <laughs> I can imagine him rolling, failing, and then he's rolling he is, to wake he's kind of... oh, he's, Franklin. He's, he's, Franklin. He's got that stiff upper lip. You know, that whole exactly. British, British servitude. Oh, well, that's a bit of badness, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm off to <laughs> What's everybody doing? Franklin, go back to Mrs. Franklin. Do not leave her alone. Whatever yeah, you hear I'm, tonight. I'm, <laughs> I'm stepping forward and like, putting my hands on his shoulders. Franklin, it, believe me, you, the best place for you to be right now is next to Mrs. Franklin. Look after her. Um, I hope nobody I minds. we're going to have to uh, Fancy accelerate our plans to try and... <laughs> Would you like to get me a cup of tea while you're down, please, sir? <laughs> I hope Perhaps nobody minds. I'm going to close the curtain. Okay. There you go. Franklin, whatever you hear tonight, do not leave Mrs. Franklin. We do not need your services tonight. You just stay in your room, keep the door locked and the lights on. Uh, uh, very well, madam. Um, uh, uh, but perhaps, uh, perhaps I should take uh, Mr. Kensington downstairs, madam, and get him a brandy or something. He doesn't look well, ma'am. Maybe we should all go downstairs. Uh, you go ahead. I'll be, uh, I'll be right behind you. Um, uh, and th so he helps take uh, he helps take uh, Kensington down into the sitting room. Um, yes, the yeah, and gets a brandy for everybody. You all uh, kind of sit there. Is Jack with us, Jake? Jack. Uh, he will be. He will be there by that point. Certainly, he would have when the screen went off. He would have been out of his room behind you. Yeah. Um. Being last one out of the room, I just yes. I, I step closer and pan the flashlight over it where you know where the figure was standing, where the the body was on the bed. Is there any trace of anything that happened? 
No, and there's no any sign. sign that it, it, so the bed like is a, completely made. There's not yeah, even it no doesn't even look like somebody's laid no, upon. No, 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 quote unquote. This is not the scene of a crime. This is an empty room. Exactly. Turn around, close the door. Yeah. <laughs> head downstairs. <laughs> and go quietly mad. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and maybe uh, do you spend the rest of the evening in the sitting room then? Uh, uh, I think you... that would be a wonderful idea. Yeah. I mean, we... <laughs> surrounded by Al, Al and I were all ready to process of making a little pillow fort. So, you know, come on, Dan. Um... Room for everyone. Yeah. When we go downstairs, we'll obviously stoke the fire, drink some brandy. I will take a glance over at the window to see if the kiln is still lit or is glowing. Um, and perhaps by that point, the glow has subsided. Things have quietened down. Yeah, the... Uh, I will... Uh, back, back to... I will follow <laughs> Gerard's example. I will get up and I will draw the, sh the, uh, the blinds. The curtains. Yes. Yeah. Um, Certainly, yeah. Nothing to see here. No more tonight. Let's get some rest. We're, yep. we're going to need it. You've had your quota of silly ghost business. <laughs> uh, and when morning finally arrives, um, it's once more a, a bright uh, early summer day. Um, looking up across the... Yeah. Looking up across the uh, the 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 the, uh, the the grounds, everything looks as it should. Uh, the workmen arrive. Um, not too long after nine 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 a.m., um, they set to work. Uh, yeah, I tell them moving. Just knock it down. Yeah. <laughs> plans, just to knock it well, down. Just... Are you sure you want to do that, sir? Yes, it's become unsafe. We have to... Oh, really? Look, yeah. Well, they're going to clear away some of the, the stuff out of yeah. the way first anyway. Gonna, no, okay. They're going to have to. Well, they yeah, make they room to clear, work. Yeah, so. they can yeah. clear it out. The same thing is going to happen over. whether we destroy it or yeah. we just, we're clearing yeah. out. Gentlemen, stuff. before you knock it down, could you just clear... Yeah. Clear, I mean, the, um, clear the center out of the... Um, and so, so we can just check the area. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's like half a dozen of them. It shouldn't take them... Many hours to, I to will, kind of uh, get through all this. I will ask but, for uh, Franklin's yeah. assistance with a, you know, a large um, a burlap sack or something to that effect, and mm. I will put those paintings in it. In the bank. Okay. Yeah. Bring them up and I will take them. it with uh, me <laughs> to the kiln. Yeah. And can I? I'll I'll spend a point of evidence collection. Can I? Can I? Can I if I do, I get any more experience if I whiz <laughs> on them first. Because I'm to I, that I, point. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm sick to you, Bob. Look at me. Write uh, my name. Yes, I'm yes. That's, that's not quite how it works in this game. Yeah. <laughs> Dangle your most um, vulnerable organ <laughs> over the haunted <laughs> um, I'll show you a masterpiece. Tune in tomorrow God. night. <laughs> so. They clear. When you'll hear a pale writer the, say, Who's doing that? <laughs> they. The workmen clear the centre of the kiln away. Um, they move uh, a number of these bricks that had fallen in from uh, the side of the building. There are a number of bricks that had kind of been left in there that had actually been made in, in the kiln as well. Um, but they kind of clear some of these away. And as they do so, so they um, eventually they, they, they do discover um, evidence of um, ash beneath all of the the, the rubble um, and jury as as they as they're kind of sweeping some of this stuff away it, it becomes more apparent that there's more than just ash here um and one of the workmen he holds up um the, what anybody that has does anybody have medicine or anything like that yeah yeah yes there is a fragment of human skull, um, part of a human jawbone with some teeth still uh, oh, in it, and and a human uh, femur. Can oh, I use forensics to judge cause of death? Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they I, were. I think you'll find they were burned to death, and then a, and then a large not. building fell on them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 
And poor lady, poor lady had an accident. She fell on a knife four times. That's right. Uh, and these so do happen. These bone, bones are, are, are blackened as if they have been in a fire. Uh, and you yeah, think? it doesn't take long and for And more than you one to kind is of... lighting up every damn night. Yeah, the. Um, yeah. Sorry. It's been a number of years. I'm just playing that whole slowly thing. Slowly well, that, explains, <laughs> that explains what happens to Mrs. Adams. Um, <laughs> yes, I believe so. Yeah, I mean, uh, you should, hear me? Should, we, we, we will, in the interest of brevity, then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, yeah. The ashes are revealed. The uh, the the skeleton. The victim was was clearly a female, part of a female skeleton. Um, and a murder trial is eventually triggered by the local police um the remains of the victim are buried properly um but, on that. but there is the verdict for them from the coroner is murder by person or persons unknown and once that has all been completed there are no further ghostly happenings at Trevor Major. I still um, burn the paintings. Yeah, that's a, well, that's what we would have, would have done. Just trash the the kiln and the paintings. Yeah. So <laughs> the final <laughs> FU, the, the ghost. It was her that he he murdered her. Yeah. Was guilt. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Why was his presence there then? Be, because because uh, he was. He he was the he yeah it was a guilt it was guilt. So he, he, he killed himself yeah. then. Uh... Yeah. yeah. What? He killed himself? But, yeah, he I, killed I, I mean, it, then he would have further died. information would reveal that he did actually, in fact, go to France um, and he did set up a studio in France, but shortly thereafter he killed himself um, by slitting his own throat. Um, That's not all that yeah. easy to do, really. I mean, you can do no. the wrist thing, yeah, but... Yeah. Uh, you sure you didn't have a little help? No, he, he well, I mean, who knows? Maybe he paid somebody else to do it. But yeah, mm. the idea was I, that it was a manifestation better. of his guilt that the fact mm. that he was drawing the brick kiln became rooted in his subconscious. And he was drawing it in the or putting it in the paintings because it was like, as Gerard surmised, it was just a manifestation of his own guilt. His ghost was haunting the. Um, the, the house with, for that very reason yeah. and th this concludes Yay. a little bit later than we expected well, we did it, holy guys. crap it's we, did it. we yeah. actually did a one shot in, in one one shot yeah well that's quite wow. late well, thanks for sticking with us guys yeah thanks to everybody who's still awake because <laughs> like, I'm barely you. hanging in there gonna, gonna cut this bit short guys thank you everybody thank you so much to, to Mark thanks to Deloitte, to Ange, to Pill Writer. Um, yeah. Thank you. Hope you've enjoyed that story. It's been a great story. Um, it's a, gentle, a more gentler story than we're perhaps used to. It's not quite, it's quite as dark. <laughs> well, towards the end, it was starting to get um, a little less genteel. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to be on again in um, about 19 hours. Um, <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> so we're going to be doing this. Uh, we're going to be doing the conclusion of... Oh, now that's Last dedication. Week, the third part of our one shot for that one. It's been a big, it's been a long one. So uh, we'll find out what. So happens. it is invasive procedures tomorrow, right? It's invasive procedures yeah. tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I'll, 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 I will. I will wish you all well right now, and I will yeah. have the thing on, but I will be in lurk mode. That's I will not be. Look, I will not be reading so. chat. The I will have it sorry. muted. <laughs> The great thing and about I will Lords. be playing a nice game of talisman by myself. Thank you the very much. <laughs> is if we end up uh, higher on the page and more people. I've had enough for for the weekend. We're we're just going to sleep all day until we get up for the stream to to. <laughs> there you yeah. go. I wish that were possible. Um, <laughs> excellent. Sorry, Lloyd's got it planned. So everybody, well, thank you very much again. It's been great fun. Thank in you. a few hours. Thank you. <laughs> Casting the runes. House of the Brick yeah. Kiln. That's probably one of the first games of um, Hast the Runes that have been streamed. It'll be among the first, certainly. So I hope you've enjoyed that. But, um, I, 
Uh, it, yes, well done, well. Uh, some old pirate. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, it, it was it was fun. Not together. All and you did a great mm. job. And toward the latter part, where that music had started, oh man, oh yeah. yeah <laughs> <music was laughs> cool if Angie Excellent. hadn't yeah. screamed, thanks. I'd have been like, scream, thank scream, so I don't thank have to scream. <laughs> Gonna say good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Come see us again. Wowzers.